Babe, where are my keys? Mom, where's my lunch? Where's my phone? Hey, where's my blue shirt? Where's my pen? Have you seen it? Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm gonna go ahead and retire. <laughs> It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foyne Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go. Oh, and Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Auntie. Yeah. Auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. <laughs> I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boil Water Advisory. Hyper-local, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So you just do what I say. I'm gonna do. No, 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 You can assume what you're doing with freedom. Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta. From movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A scene keeps up with all of it. A fire captain facing suspension after trying to save a 95-year-old woman from a raging inferno. Tonight, his battle to have the punishment dropped. Plus, the dean of a Georgia university under arrest following a child predator sting, and more than a dozen others are facing possible charges, too. 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. Begin tonight in the Storm Tracker Center with rain returning again. It's kayak time. It is coming down for sure. I went out for dinner and I should have taken a kayak instead. <laughs> Chief Meteorologist, or they, that's Sam. Hey, Sam, what's I'm up, Sam? I'm second, second in command tonight. Second in command. What's up, Sam? <laughs> hey, we're looking at a lot of rain moving in and we're really just getting started as we're going to see torrential rain overnight. And it's already been coming down, cats and dogs, as you were saying. It is really coming down at quite a rate all across North Georgia from Calhoun to Ella J. We've got widespread rain from Canton into Gainesville. It's really coming down where you see the orange and the yellow colors. That is moderate rainfall stretching down into Lawrenceville and across I-20 down towards McDonough uh, and towards Zebulon. We have plenty of heavy rain and this extends well out to the west into Alabama, especially here on the south side towards Montgomery and then expanding out even further here. You can see that it extends well out into the Arklatex, so Texas this is Arkansas, Louisiana. So all this moisture is going to be heading in our direction. So as we go to the wall, we can tell you that we do have that flood watch in place, flash flood watch. In fact, you can see all those flood warnings in place across much of uh, Alabama as well. So we are also seeing some flood warnings in place like Big Creek where we were earlier in the thunder truck in Alpharetta, which often floods, but especially when you get two to four inches of rain on already saturated ground, they're expecting to be above flood stage by the time we get to tomorrow afternoon, uh, peaking at 10 feet on Wednesday morning. And you can see all this rain that's going to be heading in. Now this is as of 7 a.m. So expect a long night of rainfall, heavy at times tonight, and then more rain moving Moving in during the day on Tuesday, then we get a little break and then we're talking even more rain Wednesday night into Thursday with a threat of severe weather and we'll have more details on those impacts coming up. Samantha, thank you. Another shooting at Lenox Square, this time the third in six weeks. So this time a man was shot in the abdomen by someone he planned to meet there. Hope for joining us now. Hope. So was it set up or a robbery? So right now, police are trying to figure that out. Now, when I started sending out um, updates about this on social media, I got a lot of replies from people who were going, really? 
again, another shooting. So let's take a look. Sydney Jarman actually wrote, at this point, if y'all keep going, keep this up, they're going to shut the doors immediately because this is ridiculous. Another person wrote, oh, Lenox Square on the board again. So Atlanta police know there's a problem, and they talked to me about it. So is that something random? The victim and his friend arrived in the Bloomingdale's parking lot in this SUV Monday afternoon. They planned to meet the suspect for what police called a transaction. There was a connection between the victim and the suspect, and we're exploring what exactly that connection was. At some point, the suspect shot the victim once and left the parking lot in a car. The 40-something-year-old victim lived. Sergeant John Chafee with Atlanta Police said all of the recent shootings happened during the day with police patrolling nearby. These are separate incidents and very brazen criminals that are going to come out here and do something like this. A few days after Christmas, an attempted robbery ended with a Macy's worker being shot. She survived and two men faced charges. And three weeks ago, Antonio Williams is accused of trying to rob Christian Edlin. Edlin and his friend followed Williams into a parking lot to confront him when a police officer showed up and saw Edlin holding Williams at gunpoint. GBI says Edlin refused to put down the gun and was shot by the officer. Edlin survived and was charged with aggravated assault. Williams was charged with robbery by snatching. This mall has been an area where we've been focusing increased uh, patrols and things of that nature. We've worked very, very closely with security here to ensure that we're doing all that we can. So police looked at surveillance video as they're trying to confirm the identity of the suspect in today's shooting. Now, in all of the shootings, police said they responded quickly, they made the appropriate arrests, and they're working to do the same with this case. Hope, thank you. To read more about how APD and the mall are addressing the safety issue, you can look for our story on the 11 Alive app in the As Seen on TV section. New tonight, all is clear on I-20 just past MLK after Atlanta police say a man was shot in the leg. It blocked two lanes of traffic during the evening rush hour. But all lanes have since been reopened. The victim is expected to survive. It's not clear who fired the shot and the circumstances surrounding the shooting. We will post updates on the 11 Alive News app as soon as we are able to ascertain any of the information. Having our speed feed tonight, social media influencer Lori Harvey outsmarted two thieves attempting to steal her Rolls Royce truck. It was all caught on the video. It happened at a parking garage on Peachtree Road last week. You can see her grabbing items from her trunk when a man suddenly slides into her driver's seat. She confronts him, but he pushes her, so she walks away. A second man then comes up and grabs a duffel bag from the trunk, but unable to start the Rolls Royce, both suspects take off in another car. Harvey told police she knew they wouldn't be able to steal the car because she had the key fob right on her. Police are still looking for the suspects. Harvey is related to Family Feud host Steve Harvey. A Valdosta State University dean is among 14 arrested in an online child predator sting. According to the GBI, the suspects traveled to South Georgia with the intent of meeting children for sex. One of the suspects, this man, Keith Walters, according to our sister station in Macon, Walters is listed as the dean of the College of Science and Mathematics at Valdosta State. Police say there could be additional charges and arrests coming. A Gwinnett County man is charged tonight with killing his mother. Police say 45-year-old Otto Kim confessed to killing his 81-year-old mother, Young Kim, late last night. According to police, Kim was found running into oncoming traffic on Buford Highway. When police intervened, that's when he allegedly confessed to killing his mom at their home on Chelsea Falls Lane. Police are still investigating a possible motive here. Crews battle flames to say, uh, save an older woman from a house fire in Atlanta. Sadly, she did not survive. But now, that fire captain is facing suspension without pay for his efforts to save her. 11 Alive's Elvin Lopez on that story for us tonight. Video obtained by the Atlanta Fire Union shows crews battling heavy smoke and flames while trying to rescue 95-year-old Sally Scrin. Cruz broke down the front door and pulled Scrin out, but she didn't survive. Now, nearly eight months later, the fire captain who responded to that fire is facing a four-day suspension without pay. One thing he's going to have to deal with is living with the guilt of not being able to save this uh, homeowner and then to have a financial burden on top of this as well, losing pay for 48 hours, you know, it's going to hurt him and his family financially. The documents from Atlanta Fire allege Captain Daniel Dwyer, a 15-year veteran with the department, entered the structure without his crew members, which, quote, is in immediate conflict with no freelancing, accountability, and maintaining crew integrity. The document adds that those actions 
were in direct violation of standard operating procedure. The video we obtained doesn't show the exact moment Captain Dwyer goes into the home. But Paul Gertis with the Atlanta Fire Union says the captain's suspension sends the wrong message to firefighters. When the, uh, the, the men and women in the station hear that fire captains are going to be punished for acts of valor, it, it just goes against everything in which a uh, firefighter swears an oath to uh, up, uphold. Atlanta Fire sent us a statement saying in part, quote, it would be inappropriate to publicly discuss individual disciplinary cases that have not been totally resolved. The city of Atlanta has a process in place where each employee is afforded the opportunity to appeal proposed adverse disciplinary actions with the Civil Service Review Board. Gerda says they have filed that appeal, but says some members have waited for two years to have their appeal heard. The union is also asking the mayor to look into this. This is uh, my work truck. Aaron Key's work truck has become both a symbol of comfort Ugh. and of pain. On one hand, it keeps him busy so grief doesn't consume him. I mean, I'm a painter. But it also reminds him every day of his older brother, the only one he had. I had plans for my brother. He was wanting to work with me, and he was supposed to go with me the next day. Instead, that day, September 12, 2019, he found out Eric died just three miles from home. A driver hit him while he was riding his bicycle down North Main Street in Cedartown. He's... He's my brother, man. <laughs> and I wasn't ready for him to go. Polk County Coroner Tony Brazier also wasn't ready for what he would learn about the crash. We realized early on that this was going to be a, a problematic case. Documents obtained by the reveal show the driver, Ralph Dover, did not stop after hitting Eric. He kept driving with the hood and the passenger side of his windshield caved in. He drove almost a mile before coming to a stop here in this parking lot. But he didn't call police. He didn't call 911. He called a friend who he'd been hanging out with that evening at the county fair. That friend is attorney and Georgia State Representative Trey Kelly. Here's an old picture of the two of them together on Dover's Facebook page. The best case scenario, okay, let's say he told them, I think I hit a dog or a deer. Are you going to drive a mile away and call a lawyer? No. There is so much here, and really the story just gets worse from there. It does. Not only was the state representative involved in the aftermath of this crash, but the police chief was also involved, and no one called 911. Not the state rep, not the police chief, not the driver. We're putting together all the details for you tonight at 11 o'clock on Up Late. And we'll hear from the DA. Yeah, we've heard from the DA. We'll have those details for you as well. All right, Faith, we'll see you then. Thanks. Still to come, the group lending a helping hug to Atlanta's older population. It is a campaign to ensure they are not alone on Valentine's Day. We'll tell you about it coming up next. And don't forget, right now, we are streaming now on the 11 and Live YouTube channel. Subscribe and join the conversation in the community section. We've got more 11 and Live news in prime time after the break. You're on 11 Alive. Some mornings what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Block, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Block on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foyne Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hot spots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. 
An Atlanta icon, ever-changing, always interesting. The Crog Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pretty eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel is good vibe. When you vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate. We just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're going to get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must-see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural. Just days away from Valentine's Day, thousands of senior citizens in Atlanta are feeling the love. People 65 and over find themselves increasingly isolated as they grow older. So a group came up with a pretty unique solution to help them make a connection. Caitlin Ross tagged along with them today as they hugged people at the Sterling Estates Retirement Community. <laughs> 10 seconds. <laughs> How about 15? <laughs> Mary Ellen Layden is a pro at this. Oh, I'm a great hugger. <laughs> I love to hug. She moved to the Sterling Estates Retirement Community last year when she turned 80. As I personally have gotten older, um, I live alone. I don't have that constant contact with people. According to the Pew Research Group, more than a quarter of Americans 65 and older live alone. And that population here in Georgia is expected to increase more than 65 percent by 2030. Friends my age no longer drive at night. Um, they don't like to drive on the freeways. It's just so slowly you lose those people. Visiting Angels started the hugging campaign the week of Valentine's Day to ease some of that loneliness and isolation. It's one of the most meaningful things that you can do for another living person. They're visiting retirement communities, rehabilitation centers, and hospitals across the state all week. Mary Ellen got them ready on their first day. One of my big challenges is trying to check out if a stranger is a person who likes to be hugged or not because my first impulse is to hug somebody. Okay, so I'm trying to give Jeff these tips right Ooh. now. The best tip for hugging ahead of Valentine's Day, Jeff, is to hold for 10 seconds. Even I think that's too long. It starts to feel awkward after about three seconds, but that is how you get the most benefit, so bring it in. How about do you have to wear one of those T-shirts to get a hug? I don't think so. I don't think so. Air hugs to Sam. <laughs> Weather team has been working hard for like the past week or so. I think we're going to need extra hugs by the end of the week because this is going to be a very busy week for us. It's already started out that way and it's going to continue with this moderate rain moving in right now. So nothing severe in terms of thunderstorms, but we're seeing heavy rain and that is going to be severe in terms of flooding impacts stretching from Gainesville into Lawrenceville. We we have moderate to heavy rain right now, and as you go a little further south, it's just widespread rain. And Conyers seeing some heavier downpours, same thing in McDonough, East Griffin, and down towards Thomaston as well. So it is going to be a long rainy night as this moisture extends well into Alabama. And on the south side here near Jackson, Alabama, they had a severe thunderstorm warning and then tornado possible here as they're seeing some rotation in that thunderstorm in southern Alabama. And this moisture extends well back into Texas, so it will indeed be a very very wet night and we already have flooding concerns. In fact, flooding being reported in uh, Waleska uh, in Cherokee County and Tyson Paul in the thunder truck heading up 75 in that direction right now. So he has been dealing with pouring rain and the traffic because of it all night long. And uh, you can see this rain is ponding on the roadways and it makes driving a little treacherous out there as many cars kind of jig and jag along the way trying to avoid uh, pedaling on the road and it can be a little hazardous out there. So do be careful, Tyson. We appreciate all your hard work and I'm sure you'll be bringing updates on that Cherokee County flooding coming up in just a bit. In the meantime, as we take a look out over Rome, you can see that things are definitely uh, on the wet side there. And we also have that chance for flooding. If we can come to the wall, I think. Um, well, nope, we're going to go to that wall. We're looking at 52 was our high today after a morning low of 39. We should be around 56 and 37. So we were a little below average for our high temperature today and about another inch in the bucket with a lot more to come. And we already have a surplus of over six inches of rain so far this year. It has been a wet December into February, that's for sure. So tonight, expect to see those rain chances going up. We may see 
some thunderstorms. We're not expecting to see anything severe right now, but uh, we'll continue to see huge impacts from the flooding rain moving in and rain throughout the morning tomorrow. It'll be a, uh, a commute that'll be a wet one for you, and we'll have that wet week ahead with two to four inches of heavy rain and severe storms early as we head into our Thursday. So a flash flood watch in place. And that means that we could see flooding possible in any of these areas pretty much all across North Georgia. Some amounts may even be higher than two to four inches. And then as far as we head into tomorrow, we do have that marginal chance for severe storms on Tuesday and that chance increases as we head into Wednesday night. And that's when we could see the strongest of the storms with severe weather associated with them. In the meantime, just heavy rain and we're going to be putting up with that flood threat as we head into the next uh, four days or so. So 80% chance of rain as we head into our Tuesday with those thunderstorms expected during uh, the day. And then getting into Wednesday, we'll have a chance, 60% chance of storms, 80% chance on our Thursday. Then we get a little break for our Friday and Saturday. Enjoy that while it lasts because more rain is going to be heading in Sunday into Monday of next week. Like the song lyric goes, a hard rain is going to fall. Thank you. Trey Young is about to have one of the best weeks of his life. The All-Star Game coming up next weekend. Alex Glaze sat down with television announcer Bob Rathbun, who has had a front row seat to Trey Young's rise to stardom here in Atlanta. Trey up the wing. Edwards defending him. Long one. Good! Oh, my goodness! All right, Bob, you've been doing this a long time now. I get bored doing things, you know, after a couple of years. <laughs> How have you been able to still have fun with this this role that you're in right now? How do you get Hawks? bored with Trey Young out there every night? Exactly. Okay. Uh, this guy is amazing. And the young talent around him, uh, we're poised, you know, in the years to come to really be good and fun and, and fun to watch. So it's the young guys that kind of keep you energized? With I think this? so. you got to get tired of on his losses, though, right? You, you, want, you want some wins. Well, yeah, but you see the distance. You see the future. You see the light at the end of the tunnel. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. I mean, these guys, look at the leap that Trey's made from last year to this year. Now he's an all-star. Two years ago, Trey Young did something in college that has never been done in the history of college basketball, and he did it as a freshman. He led the country in scoring and assists in the same season. He hadn't even finished his second year. He's third in scoring and second in assists. We're not too far away from Trey being the second man in the history of the NBA to lead the league in scoring and assists in the same season. And when he gets there, I think you're going to see a guy that averages 30 points or more a game and 10 or more assists a game. And he's still so early in his career. Yeah, he's he just 21 gets, years old. What, what do you think has been that the reason for that big leap so early? I think it's just the going through it. Now I understand the grind. Now I know how to prepare myself physically. He's an all-star this year. A lot of people, surprising to me, a lot of people maybe had a problem with, with mm -hmm. him getting that, uh, that starting guard spot in the East. You cannot deny his popularity. Kids love him. You don't get a vote total like he got for the all-star game without having national appeal. People love him. You know why? Because it looks like you and me out there. He's our size. He's not 6'10", 280, ugh, dominant. He, he looks like a regular kid out there. Having a child is a memorable experience, but as we know, it comes with risk. A new study shows the chances of a pregnant woman suffering a heart attack are higher than ever before. After the break, our medical correspondent joins us with tips to ensure a healthy pregnancy. 10 a.m. on 11 Alive, traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hotspots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points.
An Atlanta icon, ever-changing, always interesting. The Crog Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pretty eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel it's good vibe. When you vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate. We just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're going to get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must-see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. It they does. are fun. <laughs> they're and they're convenient. Fun, you know. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. I just That's feel the like thing. they have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's February is American Heart Month. It's a month to raise awareness about heart health, and a new study got our attention. It says the number of pregnant women suffering from heart attacks is going up. Joining us, 11 Alive medical correspondent, Dr. Sujatha Reddy. Dr. Reddy, so uh, heart disease is still the number one killer of women in our country, and now we see the tie to mother mortality. Exactly right. Maternal mortality is something that's been out in the news a lot lately, and this is also interesting. We know for African American women, they're three times more likely to have cardiovascular complications and die when they're pregnant than non black women. So it's something to really pay attention to. And, and just to reiterate, this is younger women. What are the risk factors here? Yeah, and this is key because we've told women for a long time. When you're trying to get pregnant or thinking about trying to get pregnant, go ahead and be in the best health you can be. We know the risk factors are going to be African American race. If you have high blood pressure before you get pregnant and then while you're pregnant, that's obviously a risk. And obesity and being older, because these are all risk factors mm -hmm. for heart disease in general, but then add that to the risk of during pregnancy, which also exists because when you're pregnant, yeah. your heart is working overtime. So you're stressing your heart. If you already have high blood pressure or overweight, Weight, it's that much more of a risk. Okay, really interesting. Something else I wanted to talk to you about. We've talked in the past that the American Academy of Pediatrics discourages a, a parent sleeping with an infant. According to the American Academy of Pediatrics, though, one in five mothers are still deciding to do this. It is a mistake that could be, be deadly. And I'm curious for your thoughts on this, because I think about the women who just want to co-sleep and have an infant in bed, but then also women who are nursing and they're so exhausted that they're just falling asleep by accident. Yeah, and the last thing we want to do is discourage women from breastfeeding. We know breastfeeding itself can decrease the risk of sudden infant death syndrome. But what we're finding is despite the message being out there, parents are still sharing a bed, and that is where it can be dangerous. If you doze off and fall asleep with your baby, it happens, we've all been there and done that. Yeah. We're talking about women that are, even though they have better advice and they understand they're still doing this, but we also know there are ways to decrease the risk of sudden infant death syndrome, and we have a graphic of that. Yeah. You know, you wanna make sure you put your baby to sleep on its back. You also wanna use a firm sleep surface, not something soft and cushiony. Breastfeeding, as I mentioned, can decrease the roof, the risk, and you also want to share a room with your infant some, at least till six to twelve months, but not a bed. And despite how cute they are, don't put stuffed animals right. and crib bumpers in with that bed because what you're trying to do is decrease the risk of suffocation for that baby. And something as simple as a baby rolling on its side and its nose getting covered up by a blanket or by your arm can lead to this. You can't control yeah. everything, but there are things we can't control. We can control, and that's what we need to focus yeah, on. Yeah, keep that crib simple and put a little bassinet beside your beside bed. Beside your They're bed, close, you got but it. not right on top. You got of it. it for six to 12 months. Yeah. You got it. All right, Dr. Reddy, thank you so thank much. You.
A mother killed in front of her children. Her two-year-old daughter found putting Band-Aids on her wounds. A few answers, no arrests. Next, the murder mystery haunting this family for two decades. And a heartwarming update for a family whose three children are battling a rare and aggressive form of cancer. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go. Oh, away. Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Uh, auntie. No. <laughs> auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boyle Water Advisory. Hyperlocal, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So y'all just do what I say. I'm gonna do. No, 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 Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta. From movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, Ooh, did I not text you? All right. Ah, it's in my drafts. That's my bad. So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm. Oh, I, I consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah, I've nice got guy. the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Jess. I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish last. Oh, Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. okay. right, right. about I mean, that. Well, reward would be... Slimming, Slimming down. Okay, yes. Yeah. Right, yeah, okay. Yeah. A little water yes. in my cup. And, and beautiful... <laughs> Well, we're talking about the rain that's just going to continue as we head through the overnight hours. You can see here across much of North Georgia, we have widespread rain with some moderate to heavy rain here on the east side from Murrayville stretching over into Athens, down to Social Circle and over into Jackson and then down towards the Grange. We have some heavier showers and of course this is going to continue overnight tonight. So that flood risk increasing here across North Georgia, across uh, middle Georgia as well as we head into the overnight as this rain extends into Alabama where they have some severe storms right now. A tornado warning on the north side of Jackson, Alabama and this line of rain extends extends well back into Texas and Oklahoma. So it's going to be a very wet week ahead. And we've already had concerns about flooding, including in Cherokee County, where our own Fender truck is heading. Uh, photographer Tyson Paul is on his way to Cherokee County, where they've reported flooding in Waleska. So he's going to see there's a street that's apparently underwater there and it's caused some problems with traffic in the area. So Tyson Paul, a photographer in the Thunder Truck tonight, keeping us updated. So we have that flood risk all across North Georgia. 
tonight with two to four inches of rain in place. We have a flash flood watch that's going to be in effect through tomorrow night. We can see two to four inches of rain. The severe threat fairly low for tomorrow, but we are in that marginal level one risk for isolated showers and storms as we head into our Tuesday. But I think even a better chance once we get into late Wednesday, early Thursday, that's when we'll see our chances for severe weather going up. Uh, as this area of activity moves in our direction, this enhanced area here in Mississippi, we'll have to wait and see as we get a little closer to Wednesday, early Thursday, exactly how strong those impacts will be. We'll have more on the timing of all of that coming up in just a few minutes. All right, thanks, Sam. Officials in Rockdale County are releasing more information tonight about the ransomware attack that crippled many of their systems. In a news conference today, the director of technology services said the attack impacted operations in almost every department except public safety. And that is because after Thursday's attack, that department took many systems offline to protect information and to protect money as well. County officials say it all began with a phishing email sent to an employee. Well, when you see an email that came from somebody you know, and it looks like a request for information, innocently, they could click on it. They were legitimate email addresses for the county. It was the link inside that was bad. They say they are, in going forward, that they are going to ramp up efforts to educate employees on spotting these emails. They emphasize there is no sign that any financial or personal information had been compromised. We are told the biggest issue that caused concern was residents' ability and their uh, chances to pay their water bills. It's primary eve as Democratic presidential candidates make a final push ahead of tomorrow's New Hampshire primary. Delivering donuts in Nashua, stopping by a cafe in Conway. The Democrats who want to be president working crowds across New Hampshire right now making one last pitch. I'm asking for your vote. Less than 24 hours ahead of the first in the nation primary here. The whole country is not only looking at New Hampshire, in fact the whole world is looking at New Hampshire. Bernie Sanders and Pete Buttigieg top a new Boston Globe poll, followed by Amy Klobuchar jumping into the top three for the first time in this campaign. We feel this surge, um, and for me, it's been a long time in coming. While Elizabeth Warren... Oh, how are you feeling? I feel great. ...and Joe Biden are now long shots in the Granite State. It just makes me work harder. Regardless of how hard the Democratic candidates work... They won't win over this crowd. The Democrats should be worried. Long lines gathering hours before President Trump arrives for a rally to, he says online, shake up the Dems a bit. How could I not attend a rally seeing my hero, Donald Trump, in my own hometown? A hometown in a tiny state at the center of the political universe right now. All right, so just how important is the New Hampshire primary for Democrats? No candidate has ever gone on to win the party's presidential nomination without placing in the top two in New Hampshire or Iowa. On this Monday night, a dog, a dachshund, stolen outside of a Buckhead pharmacy has been found safe. Some great news tonight. And that kicks off our speed feed on this evening. A nine-year-old miniature dachshund named Milo was inside a running car outside the CVS on Bolton Road. Police say Milo's dog sitter got out of the car to return a red box movie. Somebody jumped in the Mercedes and took off. You can't do that in Atlanta these days. Milo has since been found and reunited with his owners. The car, the thief, they're still missing, but the headline here is the dog is, is just fine. Nine-year-old Milo. Okay. Another heartwarming update. Now more than $62,000 has been raised for a family whose three children are battling cancer. We first brought you the story of Tristan, Kyson, and Carter just a, a few weeks ago. They have an aggressive and a rare form of cancer. When we first reported the story, their goal was $5,000. If you'd like to donate, we have a link inside this story on 11alive.com. A popular Atlanta chef suddenly closing his three restaurants today, and he says it's because of his mental health. Chef Darius Williams who gained a following on YouTube, said today he shut the doors on Soul Crab and Greens and Gravy here in Atlanta. He also closed his Soul Crab location in Chicago. In a live social media broadcast today, he cited his mental health as a reason behind the decision. His restaurants have really gotten a lot of good reviews. It's too bad. Perhaps he will, he will try it again somewhere down the road. Losing someone close to you can be real tough to deal with, whether it's a family member or even a celebrity. Everyone grieves differently. 
11 Alive, Chelsea McNeil talked about it with a local pastor. It is part of this week's How Faith Fits In. Loss of life certainly grabs our attention, especially when it's someone we had a close relationship with. The loss of celebrities tends to bring out the same grief, people we barely know. Because they're in the public eye, we have a sense of intimacy. We, we see them week in, week out, and we have this sense of connection. However real that is, we just feel it. Pastor Gerard Longbonds of Peace Tree Christian Church explains how the connection is built over time. I remember the day that Kobe Bryant got selected to play for Charlotte and then the day he was shipped over to the Lakers. I remember the day he came on uh, Letterman for the first time as a 17-year-old. I remember the day in the All-Star game he tried to challenge Michael Jordan. And so his own experience in life mediated through the screen is actually shaped part of my life, my story. So that brings me back to my own personal experience. And now if he's gone, it takes a little something away from my own story, my own history. Remaining in grief is when it can cause more harm than good, according to Pastor Longbonds. He also recommends not shrugging it off. I would encourage people to not ignore their sense of mourning, even if you didn't know Kobe. Um, you hurt and that's real. And, and so it's something that maybe you need to explore. And in fact, because we're social creatures, it's probably a good idea to talk about it with people. Pastor Longbond shares that as much as we feel the effects of death, our children do as well. So what do we say to them? I think that it's an opportunity to show them that we are mortal and that we too will die. And that makes us have to think about our life in intentional terms. A public memorial for Kobe and his daughter Gianna will take place February 24th at the Staples Center in Los Angeles. Still to come, a murder mystery haunting a family for two decades. The search for the person who killed a mother in front of her children. Ooh, did I not text you? All right. Ah, it's in my drafts. That's my bad. <laughs> So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm. Oh, I, I consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah, I've like got the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Jess. I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish last. Oh, Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Oh, uh, okay. yeah. right, right. about I mean, that. Reward would be... Slimming. Slimming down. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. A little water yes. in my cup. And and beautiful skin. <laughs> well, you know, well, even too. more beautiful skin. You know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. I'm not gonna be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning Rush weekdays, five to seven a.m. Only on Eleven Alive. Some mornings, what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Block, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Block on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your Morning Rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hot spots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. An Atlanta I 
icon, ever changing, always interesting. The Crock Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pristy, eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel as good vibes. It is a cold case that is haunting one community. A single mother murdered as her two children watched in horror. Two decades later, and the family is still desperate for answers. 11 Alive's Ron Jones talked to the surviving children waiting for closure. I remember that feeling of, is my brother and my mom okay? I just remember trying to, you know, comfort them afterwards. Um, I remember sitting there. I didn't think she was dead, you know, thought she was asleep. Lyric Crowder was only two years old when her mom, Lanisha Crowder, or Lane as her family and friends called her, was killed in their Carrollton home. The year was 2000, and Lane was living a quiet life here in Carrollton. She had her hands full with little Lyric and also her seven-year-old brother, Kenneth. She had just left her mom's house on a Saturday night in August, but it would be the last time anyone would ever see her alive. I knew something was wrong. I, I couldn't tell it, but I knew something was wrong. I told my sister to hide. Mm -hmm. And then they just, they just um, came in the door and start, start beating my mom, stopped beating me. Here's the timeline according to police. Lane returns home with Lyric and Kenneth at 9.30 Saturday night. She talks on the phone with friends until midnight. Investigators believe she was killed in the early morning hours of Sunday. Monday night, a neighbor checks on the house, sees a body on the floor, and calls police. We think that it wasn't a planned out thing. Uh, more than likely, it probably was a heat of the moment kind of deal. When paramedics arrived, Kenneth had been beaten nearly to death. His mom had long passed away. As for Lyric, she was untouched. There were packages of bandages that had been opened, and she was trying to help her mama. You know, she I guess she was wanting to put the bandages on her mom's boo-boos. Now in his late 20s, Kenneth still lives with brain injuries from the beating. But he says he remembers some details about that night, including more than one killer. This, this is only, um, this is only starting then I shut my eyes now I woke up in the hospital Lane's mother Doris took the kids and raised them as her own she's been there for every question every heartbreak every success and like Kenneth she thinks the people that killed Lane knew her and are still in the Carrollton area sometimes I get around certain people but I feel like they was there as for the Crowders life goes on the only thing missing is an answer to a mystery that has haunted their family and community for two decades. You think about other children who go through that, like they're gonna remember that for the rest of their lives. And, and when people sit there and say, oh, they're not gonna really remember it, they do, they really do. The family believes the killer or killers are still living in their town and witnesses may be afraid to come forward. Well, your 11 Alive storm trackers are busy tracking all of the rain that we're seeing move across North Georgia right now. Some of it pretty heavy, especially here on the east side at the moment. In fact, here from Murrayville, stretching down towards Commerce across 85 into Athens, we're seeing some moderate rain right now, and that stretches down into Covington. Uh, the heaviest stuff has just moved past McDonough and past East Griffin. And as we extend out, you can see that we do have some severe storms in southern Alabama. This is a tornado warning that is in place north of Jackson, and this moisture extends well back into Texas. So it's going to be a good 24-hour rainfall and then another wave coming as we head into Wednesday, Thursday as well. And the amounts already adding up here with as much as two and a half to uh, four inches and more still to come. So as we take a look out, you can see that we have wet streets here in Rome at the moment and more rain coming in there as well. In fact, they're dealing with the flooding already. Missy Smith, one of our 11 Alive storm trackers, uh, showing us the flood waters on the rise. You can see this no fishing from the dock sign and it's almost overtaking that and going about halfway up the trees here. So definitely concerns about flooding in Floyd County. I think we have Tyson Paul in the thunder truck, I believe, and he is on his way to Cherokee County where they've been reporting uh, street flooding there in Waleska. Apparently there was a road closure that happened there. And uh, so right now it looks like he is navigating those wet roadways. And of course the rain 
appears to be hitting the windshield there. So it looks like he's getting a little further out in the country and maybe the reception is freezing up just a little bit. But thank you, Tyson Paul. And I'm sure uh, Chris Holcomb in the next hour will have the latest on the flooding there as Tyson arrives in Waleska. So we're looking at the rain that's going to continue overnight. Those rain chances just each and every hour as we head into the next 12 hours. And notice the temperatures are really going to be going up, but the trade-off is going to be thunderstorms. So we'll see those temperatures on the warm side as we head into our Tuesday and those storm chances going up. And then, of course, thunderstorms can drop a lot more rain. So we still have that flash flood watch in place. We're expecting two to four inches across North Georgia by the time we get to our Tuesday evening. This flash flood watch through Tuesday PM. So we're looking at the uh, chances of severe as well with this isolated severe storms expected across parts of the Atlanta metro area where you see the darker green color. That's a level one severe threat, mainly for damaging wind gusts and flooding rain, but we can't rule out an isolated tornado and those chances for severe going up a bit Wednesday late into Thursday. And that's when we have the level one across the Atlanta metro area and most of North Georgia. And then across northwest Georgia, we have a little better chance for a little white more widespread possible severe storms as we head into our overnight Wednesday into Thursday. So here's your timeline on that. Rain overnight tonight, possible storms with that flash flood risk continuing overnight tonight into tomorrow. A wet morning commute, maybe leave a little extra drive time. Southwest gets to 20 miles per hour and two to four inches of rain before all is said and done. And then the storms move in Wednesday night into Thursday, mainly a level one chance of severe, but Northwest Georgia seeing that level two chance. Strongest will be overnight as well into Thursday morning. So we're looking at those storms moving in, heavy rain at times. We'll get some breaks in the action throughout the day tomorrow, but then we'll be expecting our next round that'll be coming in during the day on Wednesday, particularly during the PM hours here. And as we approach Thursday, that's when we expect to see that line of storms move in and some of those could potentially be severe. So here's your seven day forecast, an 80% chance of showers and storms on our Tuesday. We're warming up close to 70 on Wednesday with those thunderstorms around and into Thursday as well, an 80% chance of storms. And then notice as temperatures radically drop down on the chilly side again on Friday and Saturday as we dry it out with the rain returning Sunday into Monday of next week. Longtime Atlanta newsman Wade Medlock died over the weekend. Mr. Medlock's full baritone, a familiar voice of this city. He worked for WGST. This was a time in Atlanta when GST was the equal of WSB radio. I mean, all the great voices were there, you know, from Handy when he was local to um, Neil Bortz, Clark Howard. Tom Hughes in the morning. They, they were a top three or four uh, radio station here for, geez, for generations. You had the Falcons, you had the Braves, you had Georgia Tech all on their air. But Wade was a terrific broadcaster, musician, really a kind man, uh, a great colleague. He will be missed. All, all the best to his family and all of his friends as well. We'll be right back. I'm sugary. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Right, right. About I mean, that. Well, reward would be. Slimming. Slimming down. Okay. Yes. Yeah, right. yeah, okay. yeah. A little water yes. in my cup. And, and beautiful skin. <laughs> well, you know, even too. more beautiful skin, you know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. I'm not going to be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Some mornings, what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Block, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Block on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your Morning Rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hot spots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. 
An Atlanta icon, ever changing, always interesting. The Crock Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pristy, eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel it's good vibe. When you vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate, we just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're gonna get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must-see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Jennifer Aniston, Hugh Jackman, Chris Pratt, what do these celebrities all have in common? Well, reportedly, they've used a way of eating, or some refer to it as a diet, and it's called intermittent fasting. This is a popular diet, but does it work? David Schechter with our verified team has the research and has all the information you need. Here goes. So what I wanted to tell you is that uh, I'm on about hour 16 of not eating. How's that going? I'm pretty hungry right now. <laughs> Can you hear it? Verify fast facts. Have you heard about intermittent fasting? It's where you restrict your eating so you just eat for an eight hour period and then you fast for a 16 hour period. Or there's alternate day fasting where you just have 500 calories today, but tomorrow you can eat whatever you want. So here's what everybody wants to know. Is there a link between intermittent fasting and weight loss? For answers, I'm looking at published research. Hey. Hi. There you are. And talking to Dr. Krista Verity. She researches intermittent fasting at the University of Illinois, Chicago. Is there a link between intermittent fasting and weight loss? Yes. Yes, there's a link between uh, intermittent fasting and weight loss. So I guess it works. We're done. But wait, how well does it work? Verity co-authored this paper in the Journal of American Medicine, Internal Medicine. It looked at weight loss associated with alternate day fasting. Over a year, participants experienced 6% weight loss. A smaller study Verity also co-authored looked at eight hour time restricted eating. It found participants lost 3% body weight over three months. And this paper in the annual review of nutrition analyzed 16 research papers on intermittent fasting and found almost any intermittent fasting regime can result in some weight loss. Now there's a lot of information out there that says people are losing weight because intermittent fasting is actually changing our metabolism, burning more energy. Is that true? Does intermittent fasting help you actually burn more calories? Intermittent fasting does not help you burn more calories. Intermittent fasting helps people lose weight just because they end up eating less. Um, it's not like revving up their metabolism or anything like that. Um, it's just literally because you're kind of fooling the body into eating less in some way. So is there a link between intermittent fasting and weight loss? The answer is yes. But the secret is not some magic sauce. It happens because you're eating less food. If you've got something you want verified, send me an email. Now let's go get that hamburger. A life-threatening medical battle brought back his passion for art. Why, well, congratulations are in store tonight for Columbus Cook. Graham, and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from 5 to 7 on the Morning Rush on 11 Alive. Newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Babe, where are my keys? Uh, where's my lunch? Where's my phone? Hey, where's my blue shirt? Where's my pen? 
seen it. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go. Oh, auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Uh, auntie. No. Auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. <laughs> I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boyle Water Advisory. Hyper-local, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So you just do what I say. I'm no, 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 there is always something filming here in Atlanta, from movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A-Scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, Ooh, did I not text you? All right. Ah, I sent my drafts. That's my bad. <laughs> We want to say congratulations to a friend of the show we met through Brave Conquer's Fear. Columbus Cook, an artist with brain cancer, was just honored for more than 20 years of service to our country. <laughs> Military has been like family. The room was full of people who say he is a mentor and friend. Such respect and admiration for Master Sergeant Columbus Cook as he retired at Dobbins Air Base. Pride, honor, and distinction in wartime and peace. They talked about more than 20 years of stellar service and now being inspired to see him find new life through facing death, a GBM brain tumor. It was his commander who noticed he hadn't been himself and sent him to the doctor. One of the most incredible leaders I have ever met in my entire life. Cancer brought Columbus back to art. Express myself. He'd put off pursuing that passion his entire life. Journey to retirement has been really surreal. Columbus and his wife Val say it means a lot to share the entire journey with his military family. To be able to be with them in that, in that way, that feels good. Cheryl has been following Columbus Cook's journey since last year. You can watch her stories on 11alive.com and on the 11 Alive News app. Just search Brave Conquers Fear. All right, it is a wet night. Aisha, yeah. you, are, uh, you remind me a little bit of Deion Sanders here in the early 90s. You could play oh, right. offense, defense. Yeah. Baseball, you could play football. baseball, football. Whatever you need. You just move the uniform from <laughs> one place to the other. Put me in, coach. <laughs> I'm always ready. Stay ready so you don't have to get ready. There you go. Well, like as it. you know, it's I almost like 9 o'clock, Jeff. And we have a lot coming up next on 11, 11 Alive Primetime News. A firefighter risking his own life to save an elderly woman from a burning home. Why he is now being punished for his actions. And a backlog of untested rape kits is growing larger with each passing month. Coming up, how proposed budget cuts could make the situation even worse. Plus, there's a possible solution. 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. First tonight, the rain has returned in a big way. This is right near the Gwinnett County Courthouse this evening. Chief Meteorologist Chris Holcomb is tracking the potential for more flooding tonight. Yeah, we've got some good rain that's coming into our area tonight. We've already had pockets of moderate to heavy rain that came through. But the rain is not over yet, folks. We're still going to see some showers that will be moving through our area. If you're watching, wondering why this phone is sticking up, it's because I'm doing a Facebook Live right now on my Facebook page, Chris Holcomb 11 Alive. We've got more than 700 people on right now. In fact, Vicki Byrne is saying, stop this rain, please. Patty Seller says, love the snow on Saturday. Jason Vogt is watching in Athens. Um, 
Uh, Vicki Burns says waiting for a two hour delay in Paulding County. So um, a lot of people on. If you want to continue that weather conversation, join us on uh, my Facebook page, Chris Holcomb 11 Alive. There's that heavier rain that moved over to the east, but folks, we still have more showers that are here with us. Breaking up a little bit here on the west hand side, but then over here to the west, we have more of this rain that's coming in from Alabama. And look at this. This just goes all the way back into Mississippi, too. So we'll keep seeing these waves of rain that will be pushing into our direction overnight and then for much of the day tomorrow as well. So we have a flood risk. The ground is already saturated from all of the water that we had last week, and now we are watching for the potential for some uh, for some flooding. Let me take you live out there right now to our storm tracker thunder truck. This is the view. Ooh, that car pulled out right in front of thunder truck there. Uh, this is in Waleska, uh, and the thunder truck is headed up toward Ammons Road, where we have reports of a, a creek that has washed over the road there and and uh, closed it down. So. Thunder truck is on the way. You can see uh, the rain that is up in Cherokee County right now in the northern end of the county. Here's a look there. It looks like some of that uh, ponding on the roadways in front of Thunder truck right now. So please be careful. When it is dark out there, it is so hard to see, uh, you know, where you have water on the road or or thicker water, standing water on the roadways. Don't drive through any flooded roads because you don't know what the condition of the road is below that. We have a flash flood watch in effect for North Georgia, Metro Atlanta, down on the south side. Individual creeks and streams and rivers have flood warnings. We're expecting two to four inches of rain from earlier tonight into tomorrow, and uh, that could cause some flooding because many of those creeks and streams are already swollen. Stay with us. We'll talk about uh, additional rain coming in and even the timeline of when we can see some stronger storms, more on that coming up. Well, another one. We're talking about another shooting yeah. at Lenox Square. This is the third one in six weeks. Okay, so this time a man was shot, someone he was planning to meet. Hope for it joins us now. So, Hope, is this actually a setup or a robbery? What do we know? So police told me they're working to figure that out right now. But when I started sending out updates about the shooting on social media, several people responded saying, really, another one? Take a look at this of so Sydney Jarman Road. At this point, if y'all keep this up, there's going they're going to shut the doors immediately because this is ridiculous. And another person wrote, oh, Lenox Square on the board again. So Atlanta police, they know there's a problem and they talked to me about it. So it's not something random. The victim and his friend arrived in the Bloomingdale's parking lot in this SUV Monday afternoon. They planned to meet the suspect for what police called a transaction. There was a connection between the victim and the suspect, and we're exploring what exactly that connection was. At some point, the suspect shot the victim once and left the parking lot in the car. The 40-something-year-old victim lived. Sergeant John Chafee with Atlanta Police said all of the recent shootings happened during the day with police patrolling nearby. These are separate incidents and very brazen criminals that are going to come out here and do something like this. A few days after Christmas, an attempted robbery ended with a Macy's worker being shot. She survived and two men faced charges. And three weeks ago, Antonio Williams is accused of trying to rob Christian Edlin. Edlin and his friend followed Williams into a parking lot to confront him when a police officer showed up and saw Edlin holding Williams at gunpoint. GBI says Edlin refused to put down the gun and was shot by the officer. Edlin survived and was charged with aggravated assault. Williams was charged with robbery by snatching. This mall has been an area where we've been focusing increased uh, patrols and things of that nature. We've worked very, very closely with security here to ensure that we're doing all that we can. So police are looking at the surveillance video. They're trying to confirm the identity of the suspect. Now, in all the shootings, police told us they responded quickly and they made the appropriate arrests, and they're working to do the same with this case. Yeah, hopefully they can figure this one out. Hope, thanks a lot. To read more about what APD and the mall are doing to address the safety issue, look for our story on the 11 Alive app in the As Seen on TV section. All new on primetime tonight, folks, two accused of killing a Clark Atlanta student appear before a judge this afternoon. Jordan Jones and... Baron Brantley both waived their arraignment this evening following or allowing the case to move forward. Investigators allege that Jones and Brantley killed Alexis Crawford on Halloween night, then dumped her body in a Decatur park. Brantley is accused of sexually assaulting Crawford a few days before she was killed. State officials say a backlog of hundreds of untested rape kits is accumulating at the GBI crime lab and proposed budget cuts could make it worse. The situation puts a spotlight on a half billion dollars in budget cuts that the governor proposed and a problem the state thought it had already solved. 11 Alive's Doug Richards has a look at how lawmakers are now pushing back. 
Lawmakers are trying to fix a self-inflicted problem. They cut taxes. That resulted in a loss of state revenue. And now the state is trying to deal with budget cuts for services, including the GBI Crime Lab. The GBI Crime Lab processes scientific evidence for crimes across Georgia, including rape kits, which collect DNA evidence and links the DNA to criminal suspects. Years ago, there were thousands of unprocessed rape kits in Georgia. In 2018, the state announced it had cleared the rape kit backlog. But now it's back. The backlog has grown some. It's fluctuated up and down. GBI Director Vic Reynolds told lawmakers the state crime lab has 768 untested rape kits as of last week. It's a number that could grow to 2,000 by the end of the year. I'm going to do everything humanly possible to make sure it didn't get any larger than that. Yet the state is proposing cutting the crime lab's budget by $1.6 million this year, cutting scientists and lab technicians, and then doubling those cuts next year. The backlog of overall evidence that needs to be tested is over 44,000. So this is a massive problem that needs to be addressed. Four years ago, State Representative Scott Holcomb backed a new law requiring the timely processing of rape kits, which he says becomes problematic under the new budget cuts. Let's face it, we have new cases coming in every day, and then the governor's plan is to bring even more cases. He wants to very actively create uh, more prosecutions on gangs, which is only going to create an even greater strain on our existing resources. The GBI director says he wants to outsource to private firms DNA testing for crimes excluding rape and murder. That would save money, he says, but it would also cost money that's not in the state budget now. All right, thanks a lot, Doug. You know they stole personal information of nearly half of all Americans. It's me and you, the case prosecutors have already laid out against four Chinese military officers. They're accused of hacking into Equifax based in Atlanta in 2017. The hackers obtained the names, birth dates, and social security numbers of nearly 150 million Americans and the driver's licenses of approximately 10 of at least 10 million Americans. Well, the men now face charges, including domestic espionage and wire fraud. The attack from military officers also shows a disregard for the anti-hacking agreement between the United States and the U.S. of A. It was supposed to stop cyber spying on government or corporate data. Americans are still dealing with this fallout. Equifax agreed to pay a $425 million settlement plus six free credit reports a year through the year 2026 and 70 years of help if your identity is stolen. The federal lawsuit against Governor Brian Kemp's voter purge is moving forward. The lawsuit involves voters removed from rolls between 2016 and 2018 when Kemp was Secretary of State. It alleges Kemp used racially biased methodology to remove 700,000 legitimate voters. It comes down to something called cross-check. It is a list of voters a handful of states use to double-check people who are not registered to make sure they're not registered in more than one state. The plaintiffs want access to that list. The governor's lawyers say they shouldn't have it because Georgia did not end up using the list. Last week, the judge said she was leaning toward the plaintiff's side but gave the defense 30 days to explain why she shouldn't. After that, the plaintiffs have two weeks to respond. The judge will then issue a final decision. If the judge sides for the plaintiffs, they will get access to that cross-check list to see if anyone was mistakenly removed from voter rolls. A reveal investigation has uncovered troubling details about one of the most powerful state lawmakers and a police chief in a man's death. It's like rubbing salt in an open wound. This whole sordid mess should have never happened. Documents obtained by Reveal investigator Faith Abube shows Georgia House Majority Whip Representative Trey Kelly called the off-duty police chief after his friend hit a cyclist. Neither public official nor the driver called for medical services while that man was lying in a ditch dying. The victim's family wants to know why. I wouldn't do that to a dog. Well, that's a human being. You're playing with people's lives. You're playing with people's welfare. You can't do that. Tonight on Up Late, should anyone be held accountable? The reveal investigates at 11, right here on our sister station, 11 Alive. So to come on prime time, a fire captain is facing suspension after trying to save a 95-year-old woman from a raging house fire. Now, 
his fight to have that punishment dropped. Chief Meteorologist Chris Holcomb right now is live on Facebook uh, taking your weather questions. You can join that conversation right now on his Facebook page. We're going to catch up with him after the break. By the way, don't forget, we're streaming right now as we speak on 11 Alive's YouTube channel. Subscribe and join that conversation in the community section. We've got more 11 Alive news prime time after the break. Atlanta and come hang out with me on Morning Rush weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. It they are fun. And they're, and they're convenient. Fun. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. That's I just feel the like thing. we have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a yeah. new way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together, our voices grow. Together, we come alive, amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape. A firefighter who tried to save a 95-year-old woman's life is now facing suspension. Sadly, the woman did not survive, and now that firefighter is fighting to stay on the job. 11 Alive's Elwin Lopez is on the story tonight. One thing he's going to have to deal with is living with the guilt of not being able to save this uh, homeowner and then to, to have a financial burden on top of this as well, losing pay for 48 hours, you know, it's going to hurt him and his family financially. Video obtained by the Atlanta Fire Union shows crews battling heavy smoke and flames while trying to rescue 95-year-old Sally Scrin last June. Crews were able to pull Scrin out, but she didn't survive. Now, eight months later, Fire Captain Daniel Dwyer, who responded to that fire, faces a four-day suspension without pay. Documents from Atlanta Fire show it's allegedly because he entered the structure without his crew, a direct violation of standard operating procedure. Paul Gertis with the Atlanta Fire Union says he is disappointed to hear about the captain's suspension. When the, uh, the, the men and women in the station hear that fire captains are going to be punished for acts of valor, it, it just goes against everything in which a uh, firefighter swears an oath to uh, up, uphold. Atlanta Fire sent us a statement saying in part, quote, it would be inappropriate to publicly discuss individual disciplinary cases that have not been totally resolved. The city of Atlanta has a process in place where each employee is afforded the opportunity to appeal proposed adverse disciplinary actions with the Civil Service Review Board. The union says the appeal has been filed, but it could take years to be heard. I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers. You caught me in the middle of a conversation here on Facebook Live. I am on Facebook right now at my Facebook page, Chris Holcomb 11 Alive, where um, earlier we had about 800 people on. Now we're down to about 350 or so people on Facebook Live. Many folks are asking questions about this weather. Jeannie Childers says so much rain today in Kingston, Georgia. Um, Sandra White says, are the winds going up? We will see some breezy conditions with some of these individual cells. The bigger storm threat is going to be Wednesday night into Thursday where we can have some strong winds with that. Um, and then Heather Lynn says, please tell me we're not in a deficit. We are not in a rain deficit right now. We are in a rain surplus. In fact, the ground is so saturated, it can't really hold any more water. And as more rain comes in, 
that causes the potential for flooding. Take a look right now at what we're watching here on radar where we had those bands of moderate to heavy rain that came through earlier. Those have pushed on over to the east and now we're beginning to see some breaks. That does not mean it's over. Don't be thinking, okay, it's kind of letting up a little bit over in West Georgia. We must be done, right? No, that's not the case because we have more of this rain back in Alabama. You see this building back here from Birmingham on down 20. I-20 over toward Mississippi. This is all going to keep feeding in as well. We have a stalled out front and these waves of rain just keep moving in here and it just adds more and more rain on the same path where we have already seen the rain. So let me take you out there live right now. This is our storm tracker thunder truck. Uh, this is a look at some of the conditions up near Waleska in Cherokee County. Tyson Paul right now is our driver and navigator. He has been seeing some of the uh, uh, heavy rain there that has caused some issues on some of the roads up there in uh, the Cherokee County area up in Waleska. And you can see some of that lighter rain that's falling down. But in those areas, he has run across numerous spots where uh, the water has been running over the road. And we, we had a report earlier of one of the roads closed, uh, Union Road there uh, closed because of water running over it. So this is just a perfect example of how you have to be really careful at night. It is so hard to see where we have those areas of where the water is running over the road. You don't know how deep it is. So never drive across any flooded roads. And then it's even harder to see at nighttime. Take a look right now at the um, flood watch that's in effect for all of North Georgia. You can see every county in green is where we have this flood watch that's in effect. And there are even some spots with that darker green. That's where we have some flood warnings on some individual creeks and streams here, like up in Rome, uh, also up in parts of Gordon County, up uh, toward uh, Whitfield County as well, North Fulton at Big Creek, also some of those uh, rivers and streams there in Gwinnett County. Two to four inches of rain possible from earlier today to in the morning. So take a look at some of these rain totals. Through the morning hours, we're going to see some spots north metro uh, with between two and a half and four inches of rain. And then as more showers continue tomorrow, some of that orange indicates where we can see four plus inches of rain, and that's going to run off somewhere. Now, the severe weather threat for tomorrow is on the low end. We, we're just in a marginal or level one risk. But once we get into Wednesday night into Thursday, level one risk in Atlanta, level two risk to the west of us, and then level three risk back in the Mississippi. So this is going to be a soggy pattern for the week ahead. 68 for a high Tuesday. We will see temperatures at 69 degrees once we get into Wednesday with better chances for showers late Wednesday into Thursday with that potential for storms early on Thursday. Highs near 65. It finally pushes out of here. We dry out Friday and Saturday. Cold though. Lows in the 30s. Highs in the 50s. And then Sunday rain chance comes back at 50 percent. 50 percent chance on Monday too. But temperatures back to 66 degrees for the start of next week. All right. Thanks a lot, Chris. You know, we're just days away from Valentine's Day and thousands of senior citizens in Atlanta are feeling the love. People 65 and older find themselves isolated as they grow older. But a group has a unique solution to help make that connection. 11 Alive's Caitlin Ross visited the Sterling Estates Retirement Community to find out how. <laughs> 10 seconds. <laughs> How about 15? <laughs> Mary Ellen Layden is a pro at this. Oh, I'm a great hugger. <laughs> I love to hug. She moved to the Sterling Estates Retirement Community last year when she turned 80. As I personally have gotten older, um, I live alone. I don't have that constant contact with People. According to the Pew Research Group, more than a quarter of Americans 65 and older live alone. And that population here in Georgia is expected to increase more than 65 percent by 2030. Friends my age no longer drive at night. Um, they don't like to drive on the freeways. It's just so slowly you lose those people. Visiting Angels started the hugging campaign the week of Valentine's Day to ease some of that loneliness and isolation. It's one of the most meaningful things that you can do for another living person. They're visiting retirement communities, rehabilitation centers, and hospitals across the state all week. Mary Ellen got them ready on their first day. One of my big challenges is trying to check out if a stranger is a person who likes to be hugged or not, because my first impulse is to hug somebody. Okay, so she said the best tip for hugging Hold that hug for at least 10 seconds. Now, it may seem like a really long time, but that's how to get the most benefit out of a Valentine's Day hug.
Well, having a child is a memorable experience, but as many of us know, it comes with risk. A new study shows the chances a pregnant woman may suffer a heart attack are higher than ever before. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. It they does. are fun. <laughs> they're and they're convenient. Yeah. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. That's I just feel the like thing. they have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a yeah. new way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together, our voices grow. Together, we come alive. Amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together, we are unstoppable. Together, we are where Atlanta speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows? Hey, and they cliffhangers. Would, you know, they yeah. would wait the next week. You're, oh, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Atlanta, almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Alive's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man. It's the heart of the sun. February is American Heart Month. It's a month to raise awareness about heart health. And a new study got our attention. It says the number of pregnant women suffering from heart attacks is going up. Joining us, 11 Alive medical correspondent, Dr. Sujatha Reddy. Dr. Reddy, so uh, heart disease is still the number one killer of women in our country. And now we see the tie to mother mortality. Exactly right. Maternal mortality is something that's been out in the news a lot lately, and this is also interesting. We know for African American women, they're three times more likely to have cardiovascular complications and die when they're pregnant than non black women. So it's something to really pay attention to. And, and just to reiterate, this is younger women. What are the risk factors here? Yeah, and this is key because we've told women for a long time when you're trying to get pregnant or thinking about trying to get pregnant, go ahead and be in the best health you can be. We know the risk factors are going to be African American race. If you have high blood pressure before you get pregnant and then while you're pregnant, that's obviously a risk. And obesity and being older, because these are all risk factors mm. for heart disease in general, but then add that to the risk of during pregnancy, which also exists because when you're pregnant, yeah. your heart is working overtime. So you're stressing your heart. If you already have high blood pressure or overweight, it's that much more of a risk. Okay, really interesting. Something else I wanted to talk to you about. We've talked in the past that the American Academy of Pediatrics discourages a, a parent sleeping with an infant. According to the American Academy of Pediatrics, though, one in five mothers are still deciding to do this. It is a mistake that could be, be deadly. And I'm curious for your thoughts on this, because I think about the women who just want to co-sleep and have an infant in bed, but then also women who are nursing and they're so exhausted that they're just falling asleep by accident. Yeah, and the last thing we want to do is discourage women from breastfeeding. We know breastfeeding itself can decrease the risk of sudden infant death syndrome. But what we're finding is despite the message being out there, 
parents are still sharing a bed and that is where it can be dangerous. If you do as often fall asleep with your baby, it happens, we've all been there and done that. Yeah. We're talking about women that are, even though they have better advice and they understand they're still doing this, but we also know there are ways to decrease the risk of sudden infant death syndrome and we have a graphic of that. Yeah. You know, you wanna make sure you put your baby to sleep on its back. You also wanna use a firm sleep surface, not something soft and cushiony. Breastfeeding, as I mentioned, can decrease the roof the risk and you also want to share a room with your infirm since at least till six to 12 months but not a bed and despite how cute they are don't put stuffed animals right. and crib bumpers in with that bed because what you're trying to do is decrease the risk of suffocation for that baby and something as simple as a baby rolling on its side and its nose getting covered up by a blanket or by your arm can lead to this. You can't control yeah. everything, but there are things we can't control. We can control, and that's what we need to focus yeah, on. Yeah, keep that crib simple and put a little bassinet beside your beside bed. Beside your They're bed, close, you got but it. not right on top. You of got you. it for six to twelve months. Yeah. You got it. All right, Doctor Reddy, thank you so thank much. You. Coming up. There's a whole lot of properties that have been conveyed to your company where people are dead. Hundreds of homes stolen with only a forged signature. A reveal investigation coming up on prime time on the WATL. And if it's in your neighborhood, it's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, Ooh. did I not text you? All right. Ah, it's in my drafts. That's my bad. <laughs> So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm. Stop. Yeah, I consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah, yeah, I've got like the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Jess? I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish last. Oh, Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Right, right. About that. Well, reward would be. Slimming. Slimming down. Okay. Yes. Right, yeah, okay. Yeah, a little water yes. in my cup. And, and beautiful skin. Well, you know, well, even too. more beautiful skin, you know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. It's not going to be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Some mornings, what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Block, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Block on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your Morning Rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hot spots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever changing, always. Welcome to The Reveal in primetime. I'm Chief Investigator Brendan Keith. Documents signed by people years after their death expose the lack of safeguards when it comes to property deeds. An investigation found it's so easy to steal a home that some are even accused of doing it from their prison cells. He wants to talk to me. I want to talk to him. Hey, Arnaldo. I'm not going to lie. The money was good. 
Arnaldo Ortiz made his money stealing people's properties. I have bought me a couple houses. At least 25 times in Dallas County alone. Should it be that easy to fraudulently transfer a property? It shouldn't be like that, but that's how easy it was. In fact, it's so easy that he even allegedly did it from his prison cell. So how does someone steal your property? When a property deed's filed with the county clerk, no one checks to see if it's legit. So scammers are forging people's signatures on deeds, even the signatures of dead people, taking control of property they don't own, and then either selling it or renting it out to make easy money. Ortiz is just the latest discovery we've made in an ongoing WFA investigation. Mr. Baldridge, I'm Tanya Eiser with Channel 8. Back in May, we told you about real estate investor William Baldridge. There's a whole lot of properties that have been conveyed to your company where people are dead. Please get out of my face. Like Ortiz, our investigation found Baldridge had also gotten signatures on property deeds from dead people, or even people that did not exist. Those documents then allowed Baldridge's companies to gain ownership of homes in Dallas and Houston. A criminal investigation into Baldridge is underway. Let's go back to Arnaldo Ortiz. This is surveillance video of investigators interrogating him two years ago. Did you sign that deed or did he sign it? He claims the owner signed it. No, I didn't sign it. Giving him control of the property. Watch as the investigator calls him out on his lie. Come on, Arnaldo. No, he did. You know this guy right here, the owner? The guy's blind. He can't sign his name. Ortiz didn't limit himself to stealing houses. Using forged deeds, he transferred ownership of this former Sam's Club. This used to be a Burger King. He stole that too. Bank officials weren't off limits either. The name of a vice president at City Mortgage was forged to steal this home. He sold this property. I didn't sell this property. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. That house was sold to an investment company. In turn, they sold it to Leon Song. Uh, we were doing a real estate investment at that time, so we were looking for a deal. The real estate deals triggered a years-long legal battle. The question, who rightfully owned the property? I rely on title company. That's why we pay them to run the title for us. The title company ultimately paid to settle the case, giving Song ownership of the home. Before all this, did you have any idea something like this could happen? No, I have zero idea. Mark Tarabi is Song's lawyer. Is there anything she could have done to protect herself? In Miss Song's case, no, because she relied on the title companies and, and everybody was fooled. Tarabi showed us a typical warranty deed. And all you need to do is fake a signature on one of these. And once it's recorded, as a matter of public record, you're the new owner. Last year, Ortiz pleaded guilty to more than 25 counts of theft. He got a 10-year sentence. How surprising would it be to you to know that the person who did this to you is now accused of doing it again from prison? Really? I'm speechless. How could he do it again? Ortiz now faces eight new felonies. One of them involves a man who died in 1994. Yet last year, somehow, the dead man supposedly signed away his home. I don't know what else they're saying. They're saying I, I'm using money for my funds to commit crimes. What? I ain't did that. And get this. We've been looking into dirty deeds for 10 years. This is Norris Fisher of Fort Worth, one of the most prolific real estate scammers in North Texas history. How is it that um, the signatures of dead men could be notarized? That's impossible. There had been hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of false warranty deeds filed by Norris Fisher. Retired federal agent Presley Darnell led the Fisher investigation. He created a huge mess. Fisher's been in prison for nearly a decade, but few safeguards have been put in place. Experts say requiring anybody filing a deed to show photo identification would be a start. Otherwise, anybody can make a name up like, and, and forge documents. And one thing's for certain, it shouldn't be that easy that it can be done from prison. As for Ortiz, he's awaiting trial in the Dallas County Jail. In Dallas, I'm Tanya Iser.
There are some simple steps you can take to protect yourself from these kinds of scams. When you're buying a property, experts say you should use a title company. That way, if there is fraud, it will be the title company on the hook. And check in with your appraisal district to see if they have a way to monitor if there's any activity on your properties. You can see more in-depth investigations like this one by going to our website, 11alive.com. And don't forget to watch The Reveal, the only local investigation show in the country, Sundays at 6 on our sister station, 11 Alive. I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers. We've been watching a wave of rain move through our area. It did have some heavy rain with it earlier. Uh, that heavier rain is pushed off. We're seeing some breaks in the action right now, so just a little bit of a lull in the activity. Still some light rain out there, just not as heavy as it was earlier. But now, let me take you over to the south and west, and this is the next batch of rain that's coming in from Alabama. It has moderate and even some pockets of heavy shower activity with it. That's going to be moving through later on tonight during the overnight hours as well. So this flooding threat is going to continue here. And you see it doesn't stop back at Birmingham. Excuse me, it keeps moving back southwest of Birmingham and even back into Mississippi. And all of this rain is just going to pretty much funnel along the same track here and move more showers into our area and that is just going to increase the flooding risk. Let's take a live look right now at Thunder Truck. Thunder Truck has been hanging out mainly over in Cherokee County where we've had numerous reports of some roads that have been uh, covered up with water there. You can see some of that ponding on this roadway. Uh, he's about to go over a bridge there. Of course, there are no issues right there right now, but it's often on the sides of those bridges and on the other side of that. Sometimes we have some water that's coming up over that. So, folks, it is dark. There's a lot of water on the roads, and it is so hard to see at night. So definitely be careful. You could be going really fast and think everything is fine, and then all of a sudden you hit an area that is covered up with water. Here's the flood watch that we have for North Georgia, Metro Atlanta, and areas to the south, and then numerous flood warnings for individuals creeks and streams and rivers stay with us. We're going to talk more about how much more rain to expect overnight and whether or not we'll see any additional flood risks or storm risks coming up this week. More on that in just a few minutes. Just into the newsroom, Atlanta police say a man was shot on I-20 during a road rage incident. The victim told police that he accidentally cut off a female driver who then shot at him, hitting him in the leg. Investigators say the female driver later called 911, claiming the victim cut her off near the MLK exit. She did admit that she shot at the victim, but claims he shot at her first. Both drivers are being interviewed by police and charges are pending. A dog stolen outside of a Buckhead pharmacy has now been found safe. That's going to kick off our speed feed tonight. Nine-year-old miniature Dachshund Milo was inside a running car outside of CVS on Bolton Road. Police say Milo's dog sitter got out of that car and then someone jumped in and took off. Milo has been reunited with his owners. That car, that Mercedes and thief are still missing. Another heartwarming update now. More than $62,000 has been raised for a family whose three children are still battling cancer. We first brought you this story of Kristen Kaysen and Carter Rush a few weeks ago. All three boys have a rare, aggressive form of cancer. When we first reported this story, their goal was just $5,000. If you'd like to donate, we have a, a link inside this story on 11alive.com. Well, a popular Atlanta chef suddenly shuts down his three restaurants today. Darius Williams, who has a huge following on YouTube, said that today that he shut the doors of Soul Crab and Greens and Gravy right here in Atlanta. He also closed down Soul Crab, a location that he has in Chicago. In a live social media broadcast today, he cited his mental health as the reason behind the decision. Officials in Rockdale County are releasing more details tonight about the ransomware attack that crippled a lot of their systems. In a press conference today, the director of technology services said the attack impacted operations in almost every department except public safety. That's because after Thursday's attack, that department took many systems offline to protect information and money. County officials say it all started with a phishing email sent to an employee. Well, when you see an email that came from somebody you know, and it looks like a request for information, innocently, they could click on it. They were legitimate email addresses for the county. It was the link inside that was bad. 
They say going forward, they're going to ramp up efforts to educate employees on spotting these emails. Ron, we've even done that here at 11 Alive. This is a really big deal. They emphasize there is no sign that any financial or personal information was compromised. We're told the biggest issue this caused was residents' abilities to pay their water bills. Yeah, that's really tough. All right, straight ahead, a murder mystery haunting a family for 20 years. The search for the person who killed a mom right in front of her children. Home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. They <laughs> are fun. They're and they're convenient. Yeah. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. That's I just feel the like thing. they have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a new yeah. way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together, our voices grow. Together, we come alive. Amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together, we are unstoppable. Together, we are where Atlanta speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows? Hey, and they cliffhangers. Would, you know, they didn't yeah. wait the next week. You're, oh, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Atlanta, almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Alive's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man, it's the heart of the South. And it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home from different backgrounds, languages, and religions. And who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once an Olympic city, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta that is haunting one community. A single mom murdered as her children watched in horror. Two decades later, and the family is still desperate for answers tonight. We hear from the surviving children wanting closure. I remember that feeling of, is my brother and my mom okay? I just remember trying to, you know, comfort them afterwards. Um, I remember sitting there. I didn't think she was dead, you know, thought she was asleep. Lyric Crowder was only two years old when her mom, Lanisha Crowder, or Lane as her family and friends called her, was killed in their Carrollton home. The year was 2000, and Lane was living a quiet life here in Carrollton. She had her hands full with little Lyric and also her seven-year-old brother, Kenneth. She had just left her mom's house on a Saturday night in August, but it would be the last time anyone would ever see her alive. I knew something was wrong. I, I couldn't tell it, but I knew something was wrong. I told my sister to hide. Mm -hmm. And then they just, they just um, came in the door and start, start beating my mom, start beating me. 
Here's the timeline according to police. Lane returns home with Lyric and Kenneth at 9.30 Saturday night. She talks on the phone with friends until midnight. Investigators believe she was killed in the early morning hours of Sunday. Monday night, a neighbor checks on the house, sees a body on the floor and calls police. We think that it wasn't a planned out thing. Uh, more than likely, it probably was a heat of the moment kind of deal. When paramedics arrived, Kenneth had been beaten nearly to death. His mom had long passed away. As for Lyric, she was untouched. There were packages of bandages that had been opened, and she was trying to help her mama. You know, she I guess she was wanting to put the bandages on her mom's boo-boos. Now in his late 20s, Kenneth still lives with brain injuries from the beating. But he says he remembers some details about that night, including more than one killer. This, this is only, um, this is only starting, then I shut my eyes, then I woke up in the hospital. Lane's mother, Doris, took the kids and raised them as her own. She's been there for every question, every heartbreak, every success. And like Kenneth, she thinks the people that killed Lane knew her and are still in the Carrollton area. Sometimes I get around certain people, but I feel like they was there. As for the Crowders, life goes on. The only thing missing is an answer to a mystery that has haunted their family and community for two decades. You think about other children who go through that, like they're gonna remember that for the rest of their lives. And, and when people sit there and say, oh, they're not gonna really remember it, they do, they really do. You know, uh, the family believes the killer or killers are still living in their hometown and witnesses may be afraid to come forward. Still keeping an eye on this rain that's moving through the area. It was really heavy earlier, and we had that moderate rain that pushed over to the east. Now, here in Atlanta, we're seeing some breaks. So a lot of people are just saying, okay, kind of taking a breath here and a little bit of a break in some of that rain. Still some light stuff on the south side and to the north side, but just some, some drier air briefly. But that is not going to last long at all because we have yet another wave of rain. Some of this with moderate and even a couple of pockets of heavy rain near Anniston, going down toward Alexander City, Milltown, uh, Cleburne County, Randolph County over there in Alabama, getting in on some of that moderate rain. And so that's about to move into West Georgia and will come into Atlanta again too. So creeks and streams are all already swollen from the rain that we had last week and the snow that we had and the melt from that snow uh, and also our ground is saturated. It just can't take any more water. So this is going to cause some flooding here and that stretches on back to the west as well. In fact, take a look at this on the bigger picture so you can see what we're watching. This is our live look uh, in Noonan at this hour. So nothing particularly heavy coming down right now in Noonan. They're uh, seeing some light rain, but not as heavy as it was just a little bit earlier. So here's what we're going to be watching through the rest of the nighttime hours. As those additional waves of rain come in, and they'll be with us early in the morning as well, and then often on showers on your Tuesday, we have a flood watch, flash flood watch for North Georgia, Metro Atlanta, and areas just south of I-20. And then within this, these areas of dark green that you see here in, in North Fulton, over in Gwinnett, over in Rockdale County, over right there on along I-20 in Douglas County, up near Rome in Northwest Georgia, that's where we have some individual flood warnings on specific creeks and streams with two to four inches of rain still possible, including what we have had already this evening through the day tomorrow, and even some locally higher amounts. Now, our computer models keep refining some of those totals. This is by tomorrow morning, showing much of Atlanta getting pretty much that blue color between a half inch and an inch and a half. Here you see the purple up to the north tomorrow morning, one and a half to two and a half inches of rain. And then as that rain continues off and on during the day, there'll be some red over North Georgia, indicating two and a half to four inches of rain. And folks, that's gonna run off into creeks and streams and cause the potential for flooding. Not everybody's gonna get that much, but there will be some spots that will get some pretty good uh, amounts of rain. We have a marginal risk for strong storms tomorrow. I really think this will be later in the afternoon, and this is really a low, low risk. And the isolated tornadoes is even a lower risk than that. Maybe a couple of isolated cells with some damaging gusts, but really flash flooding is the main risk with that. As we see the main system coming in Wednesday night into Thursday, that's when we're going to have our better chance for storms, a uh, level one risk over Atlanta, level two risk over in West Georgia, and that goes to a level three risk back into Mississippi and West Alabama. And some of those storms will hold together as they move into our area. I think our biggest threat is going to be overnight Wednesday into early on Thursday morning. Here you see those areas of rain. It just keeps feeding in from Alabama over the same spots that have already had rain. Tomorrow, scattered showers during the day. At times, it can be heavy, especially in the afternoon. 
afternoon with this little bit that moves through. We'll have somewhat of a break early on Wednesday, but then later in the day on Wednesday, as we get into Wednesday night and overnight is when we'll see that next band of showers and storms that are going to be rolling our way. Here they come here overnight Wednesday and into the Thursday morning time frame as that moves our way. That's when we're going to see that potential for those stronger storms. So warm air the next few days in the 60s for highs, uh, showers and a few thunderstorms around. And then Thursday is the best chance for that early. We dry out on Friday and it gets cooler, high of 51. Saturday morning below freezing at about 30 and a high of 52. Uh, then the rain chance comes back Sunday and Monday with highs in the mid 50s Sunday, mid 60s by Monday. It's our weekly culinary journey to showcase the cuisines and cultures of Metro Atlanta. This is At The Table ATL. I'm Matt Pearl. This is our 63rd episode. That means 63 different restaurants showcasing 63 different countries, all represented in the Atlanta food scene. This time, we're heading up Buford Highway to the Mughals for a taste of Pakistan. That's chicken 65, the red chicken in there, yeah. so chicken 65. How does chicken 65 represent Pakistan? Back home, um, people like to eat like, you know, the spicy food. So this chicken 65 uh, recipe is really spicy. Marinated it for about six, seven hours, and then deep fried it. And then put on the flat top, and the rice, and some vegetables with onions. Katakat, katakat, katakat. A lot of uh, dishes named back home is also katakat. How does it feel to represent Pakistani food in Atlanta? I love doing that. We started this business about 97 after Olympic. There was not much Pakistani Indian people around here at that time. The feedback we got from the customer, two thumbs up. After that, 2020, and time just goes like that. Number 63 is on the board, and that just means 64 is coming up next week. Check us out then, and let us know where we should go. Tell us new restaurants, restaurants representing other countries. Find us and follow us on Facebook and Instagram at At The Table ATL. Hangers when we used to watch shows and they would, hangers. you know, they would ah. wait the next week. You're all, oh, what's going to happen to the six million dollar man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush weekdays, five to seven a.m. Only on Eleven Alive. Atlanta, almost six million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm Eleven Alive's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man, it's the heart of the South, and it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home, from different backgrounds, languages, and religions, and who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot, full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once an Olympic city, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man, Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film, Hawks Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us, use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from five to seven on the Morning Rush on 11 Alive. newscast not enough for you get even more at 11 alive's youtube channel where you'll find uncut interviews extended body cam footage live streams of atlanta's biggest trials and more subscribe to 11 alive today babe where are my keys uh, where's my lunch where's my phone hey where's my blue shirt where's my pen have you seen it Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foyne Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. 
where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire yeah. week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go oh, away. Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Uh, auntie. No. <laughs> auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Oh, that's little Addie. She's channeling her best Elsa during our Frozen Weekend. Children's Health Care of Atlanta shared this video with 11 Alive. It's made a dreary Monday a little bit more fun reliving yeah. this weekend snowfall. So many of you had a great time out there. Here is Cheryl Preheim with more snow memories. <laughs> Love the snow. <laughs> Brooklyn Grace is blind, so she experienced snow by feeling it touch her face. She lives near Cartersville, and for her and so many other kids, it's one of those handful of snow days they'll always remember. You love an excuse to pull out the snow pants and to have enough snow for a snowman. Now that's really something. You shared pictures of a lot of snowmen, even a snow dog. The real guys loved it too, and it sure was beautiful. As long as you didn't have to be driving it was 70, a couple days ago. or playing a soccer tournament yeah. in all that snow. And we go from that now to rain and flooding and even a severe weather threat later on this week, Wednesday night into Thursday. Uh, more moisture moving in. This time it's in the form of liquid, meaning rain around. And we're going to see more of that over the next few days. We do have that flood risk in effect with the flood watch in effect overnight and through the daytime hours tomorrow. Uh, maybe a little bit of a break in the action early Wednesday before the next round comes in. Late Wednesday, overnight into early Thursday. That's the part that might have some strong storms with it. We finally dry out by the end of the week, and it cools off, too. We're down to below freezing by Saturday morning what? with a high of 52. Man. But then guess what? The rain comes back Sunday and Monday. Oh, man. What do you do? All right. Hey, stick around for more news and weather on primetime at 10 p.m. Broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water because I'm, I'm sugary. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. okay. right, right. about that. Well, reward would be slimming, slimming down. Okay. Yes. Yeah, right? yeah, okay. yeah, a little water yes. in my cup. And, and beautiful skin. Well, you know, well, even too. more beautiful skin, you know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. I'm not going to be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Some mornings what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Blog, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Blog on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hotspots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever changing, always interesting. The Cross Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pristy, eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel it's good vibe. When you vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate, we just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're gonna get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must see. 
There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long. And even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5. 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. Chris told us Sunday was the big day to enjoy. The rain is back and there could be a chance for even more flooding. It's tapered off for now in some neighborhoods. Check out this new video coming in from Douglasville where showers have created puddles in some slick streets. Our chief meteorologist Chris Holcomb is in the Storm Tracker Center with your hour by hour forecast for where you live. Chris, how's it shaping up for the commute tomorrow morning or dare I ask? It's going to be another wet morning, so I want everybody to take time, get a little extra time to drive in tomorrow. And not only are we going to be dealing with rain, but there might be some roads that have water coming up over them from uh, nearby creeks and streams because uh, with this rain coming down, the ground is already saturated and that's going to run off into creeks and streams. And we have that potential for some flooding. Notice at the bottom of your screen, we're running the school closings here. We have numerous uh, school districts up in North Georgia that either have closings or delayed. So that's going to be there on the bottom of your screen. We had some heavier rain that came through the area early. We're in a little bit of a break right now. Uh, you can see that just some light showers on the south side, but we are not finished with the rain yet. More rain coming in from the west. This is more light to moderate rain uh, that'll be pushing through overnight, and then that goes all the way back into Mississippi, and all of this is streaming up into our direction. So here's what we're watching out there right now. This is a live look down in Coweta County uh, near the uh, Noonan area right there at downtown Noonan in the courthouse where it's uh, wet little bit of light rain still kind of lingering behind, but we have a flood watch in effect for our area tonight for North Georgia, Metro Atlanta areas down to the south of I-20 as well. Uh, two to four inches of rain possible, including what we've already had this evening and into tomorrow, and that could add to runoff and that potential for flooding. Stay with us. We'll take a look at some of those projected rainfall amounts and when we'll see a risk for stronger thunderstorms. It's going to be an active week. We'll talk about it coming up. Chris, thank you. Another shooting at Lenox Square, this time the third in nearly two months. So this time, in this case, there was a man who was shot by someone he planned to meet up with there. Hope for joining us now. Hope, was this being looked at as like a setup or an actual robbery? Well, police were hesitant to call it a robbery earlier because they were still working out the details on that. So they're still trying to figure that out right now. Now, when I started sending out updates about this on, on Twitter and social media, several people responded saying, you know, really another one? Take a look at this. Sydney Jarman wrote, at this point, if y'all keep this up, they're going to shut the doors permanently because this is ridiculous. And another person wrote, oh, Lenox Square on the board again. So Atlanta police, they know this is a problem problem and they talked to me about it. So it's not something random. The victim and his friend arrived in the Bloomingdale's parking lot in this SUV Monday afternoon. They planned to meet the suspect for what police called a transaction. There was a connection between the victim and the suspect, and we're exploring what exactly that connection was. At some point, the suspect shot the victim once and left the parking lot in the car. The 40-something-year-old victim lived. Sergeant John Chafee with Atlanta Police said all of the recent shootings happened during the day with police patrolling nearby. These are separate incidents and very brazen criminals that are going to come out here and do something like this. A few days after Christmas, an attempted robbery ended with a Macy's worker being shot. She survived and two men faced charges. And three weeks ago, Antonio Williams is accused of trying to rob Christian Edlin. Edlin and his friend followed Williams into a parking lot to confront him when a police officer showed up and saw Edlin holding Williams at gunpoint. GBI says Edlin refused to put down the gun and was shot by the officer. Edlin survived and was charged with aggravated assault. Williams was charged with robbery by snatching. This mall has been an area where we've been focusing increased uh, patrols and things of that nature. We've worked very, very closely with security here to ensure that we're doing all that we can. And earlier, police were looking at the surveillance video with the security there trying to confirm the identity of the suspect. So in all of these shootings, police said they responded quickly. They made the appropriate arrest, and now they're working to do the same with this case. Steve Harvey's daughter and social media influencer Lori Harvey 
outsmarted two thieves trying to steal her Rolls Royce SUV. And it's all caught on camera. Check it out. It happened at a parking garage on Peachtree Road last week. You can see her grabbing items from her trunk. All right, the guy here with the red arrow, he suddenly slides into the driver's seat there. She confronts him, but he pushes her. So she walks away with the key fob to her car. Whoa. She says that's why she wasn't so freaked out because they couldn't get away. Then the second man comes up and grabs a duffel bag from the trunk. They couldn't start the Rolls Royce, so the pair took off in another car. Police are still looking for them tonight. Well, wow, that's a vehicle, isn't it? Yeah. That's beautiful. A Valdosta State University dean is among 14 arrested in an online child predator sting. According to the GBI, the suspects traveled to South Georgia with the intent of meeting children for sex. One of the suspects is this man here. His name is Keith Walters. According to WMAZ in Macon, Walters is listed as the dean of the College of Science and Mathematics Department at Valdosta State. Police say there may be additional charges and arrests. The Equifax cyber attack breach that you thought was behind you may impact you for the rest of your life. That is the warning tonight as the federal government in Atlanta indicts four Chinese government military officials saying they are behind the massive hack that stole our most sensitive personal data. Here's John Shirick. We now have faces to put with the massive cyber attack on Atlanta's Equifax, according to this indictment returned by an Atlanta federal grand jury. Four Chinese military personnel, according to the feds, are the ones who hacked into Equifax in 2017 and stole the most personal info of nearly half of all Americans. The U.S. government believes it's part of China's plan to compile a gigantic database on every American citizen. Patrick Kelly of Atlanta's Critical Path Security tells me it's more important than ever for everyone to freeze their credit reports and beware of identity theft or even blackmail for the rest of their lives because of this Equifax breach and others. It's got to be more than just preventing you from being able to go buy that new house or that new car or to get a line of credit to go buy that engagement ring. This might actually be used to track you where you are and what you do and what your behaviors are. Just as Kelly points out, China's government is already tracking its own citizens. A Gwinnett County man is charged tonight with killing his mother. Police say 45-year-old Otto Kim confessed to killing his 81-year-old mother, Young Kim, late last night. According to police, Kim was found running into oncoming traffic on Buford Highway. When police intervened, that's when he allegedly confessed to killing his mom at their home on Chelsea Falls Lane. Police are still investigating a possible motive. Crews battled flames to save an older woman from a home that was ablaze in Atlanta. Sadly, she did not survive, but now the fire captain is facing suspension without pay for his efforts to save her. Here's 11 Alive's Elvin Lopez with our story tonight. Video obtained by the Atlanta Fire Union shows crews battling heavy smoke and flames while trying to rescue 95-year-old Sally Scrin. Cruz broke down the front door and pulled Scrin out, but she didn't survive. Now, nearly eight months later, the fire captain who responded to that fire is facing a four-day suspension without pay. One thing he's going to have to deal with is living with the guilt of not being able to save this uh, homeowner and then to, to have a financial burden on top of this as well, losing pay for 48 hours, you know, it's going to hurt him and his family financially. The documents from Atlanta Fire allege Captain Daniel Dwyer, a 15-year veteran with the department, entered the structure without his crew members, which, quote, is in immediate conflict with no freelancing, accountability, and maintaining crew integrity. The document adds that those actions were in direct violation of standard operating procedure. The video we obtained doesn't show the exact moment Captain Dwyer goes into the home. But Paul Gertis with the Atlanta Fire Union says the captain's suspension sends the wrong message to firefighters. When the, uh, the, the men and women in the station hear that fire captains are going to be punished for acts of valor, it, it just goes against everything in which a uh, firefighter swears an oath to uh, up, uphold. Atlanta Fire sent us a statement saying in part, quote, it would be inappropriate to publicly discuss individual disciplinary cases that have not been totally resolved. The city of Atlanta has a process in place where each employee is afforded the opportunity to appeal proposed adverse disciplinary actions with the Civil Service Review Board. Gerda says they have filed that appeal, but says some members have waited for two years to have their appeal heard. The union is also asking the mayor 
to look into this. Tonight, a reveal investigation has uncovered troubling details about one of the most powerful state lawmakers and a police chief involved in a man's death. It's like rubbing salt in an open wound. This whole sordid mess should have never happened. Documents obtained by Reveal Investigator Faith Abube show Georgia House Majority Whip Representative Trey Kelly caught the off-duty police chief after his friend hit a bicyclist. Neither public official nor the driver called for medical services while the man was laying in a ditch dying. The victim's family wants to know why. I wouldn't do that to a dog, unless a human being. You're playing with people's lives. You're playing with people's welfare. You can't do that. Tonight on Up Late, should anyone be held accountable? The reveal investigates at 11 on our sister station, 11 Alive. Still to come, the group lending a helping hug to Atlanta's okay. older population. It's a campaign to ensure they're not alone, though they are on Valentine's Day. We'll tell you about it coming up next. Mm -hmm. 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. So what's the best part about Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together, our voices grow. Together, we come alive. Amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together, we are unstoppable. Together, we are where Atlanta speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows? Hey, and they cliffhangers. Would, you know, they didn't yeah. wait the next week. You're all, oh, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Atlanta, almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Alive's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man, it's the heart of the South. And it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home from different backgrounds, languages, and religions. And who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights State officials say a backlog of hundreds of untested rape kits now accumulating at the GBI crime lab and proposed budget cuts could make it worse. The situation puts a spotlight on a half billion dollars in budget cuts that Governor Kemp proposed and a problem the state thought it had already solved. 11 Alive, Zuck Richards had so much more on how lawmakers are pushing back. Lawmakers are trying to fix a self-inflicted problem. They cut taxes. That resulted in a loss of state revenue, and now the state is trying to deal with budget cuts for services, including the GBI Crime Lab. The GBI Crime Lab processes scientific evidence for crimes across Georgia, including rape kits, which collect DNA evidence and links the DNA to criminal suspects. Years ago, there were thousands of unprocessed rape kits in Georgia. In 2018, the state announced it had cleared the rape kit backlog, but now it's back. The backlog has grown some, it's fluctuated up and down. GBI Director Vic Reynolds told lawmakers the state crime lab has 768 untested rape kits as of last week. It's a number that could grow to 2,000 by the end of the year. I'm going to do everything humanly possible to make sure it didn't get any larger than that. Yet the state is proposing cutting the crime lab's budget by $1.6 million this year, cutting scientists and lab technicians, and then doubling those cuts next year. The backlog of overall evidence that needs to be tested is over 44,000. So this is a massive problem that needs to be addressed. Four years ago, State Representative Scott Holcomb backed a new law requiring the timely processing of rape kits, which he says becomes problematic under the new budget cuts. Let's face it, we have new cases coming in every day, 
And then the governor's plan is to bring even more cases. He wants to very actively create uh, more prosecutions on gangs, which is only going to create an even greater strain on our existing resources. The GBI director says he wants to outsource to private firms DNA testing for crimes excluding rape and murder. That would save money, he says, but it would also cost money that's not in the state budget now. Flooding worries tonight as the rain continues to plague the metro area. Chief Meteorologist Chris Holcomb explains what we can expect for the rest of the night in your hour by hour forecast. Hey, Chris. Yeah, check this out. You're seeing a lot of green on here and some yellows and even some oranges. First, uh, we had some heavy rain that came through Atlanta just a little bit earlier. That is now pushed off to the east. And then we've been enjoying just a little bit of a lull in the activity here in the city at this hour where you see mainly no active rain coming down, a little bit of light rain here on the south side. But then look what else is coming. Let's go out to the west, and there's another wave coming into West Georgia right now uh, through Carroll County, up through Buchanan and parts of Polk County, Cedartown, also up into parts of Floyd County, and more of this stretches back out into Alabama and then even into Mississippi. And it's riding along the same axis. It's just going to continue moving our way during the overnight hours as we have a stalled out frontal boundary over us right now. And so that's just kind of going to guide some of these showers to move over the same areas that have already had a lot of rain and our ground is saturated. It just can't hold much more water. So all that runs off into creeks and streams and low lying areas, and that's what's giving us a flood threat. Take a live look out there right now. I want to show you what we're watching here on our tower cam. This is in Athens where we have a few showers that are uh, developing there in the Athens area right now. They're mainly light, nothing really major uh, going through those areas right now. Here is Rome. Georgia. Now on radar just a few minutes ago, I showed you where we do have some rain coming down. I know it's kind of hard to see at night, but the roads are wet. If you look right here at the street light right there, you can see some of the raindrops that are falling uh, there in the Rome area. So uh, it is raining in Rome right now and more rain is going to be coming in tonight. So that's why we have the flash flood watch in effect. It's in effect until the evening hours on Tuesday. Any additional rain coming down will prompt uh, the potential for some flooding. We even have some flood warnings on some individual rivers, creeks and streams from earlier today up through tomorrow, two to four inches of rain, and there may even be some locally higher amounts in some spots. Here's a look at the latest rainfall projections. This is actually bringing it down a little bit from what we were showing you earlier, where the purple color up in North Georgia through tomorrow morning shows one and a half to two and a half inches of rain. The blue color is a half to an inch and a half through tomorrow morning. And then look at this, even some red colors there in North Georgia by tomorrow afternoon, two and a half to four inches of rain. And here in Atlanta, I really think we'll see at least a half inch to one, maybe one to two inches here uh, before it's all said and done. And it's going to take a while before it's all said and done because we have yet another wave of heavy rain coming in here. Once we get into Wednesday night into Thursday, that might have severe weather with it. Tomorrow's severe weather risk, marginal, and I really think this is on the low end of a marginal uh, risk. I'm not really concerned about an overall severe weather threat. In the afternoon tomorrow, there might be some isolated storms that get strong. Then Wednesday night into Thursday, mainly Thursday morning, is when we have this marginal risk or level one of five risk. The level two risk is in northwest Georgia. Level three risk back into Alabama and in parts of western Mississippi. So here's the timeline tonight. Watching more of these showers feed through. Some of them will be moderate to even heavy at times in the morning. This shower scattered around tomorrow is not going to be a torrential rainfall all day long. Scattered stuff throughout the day at lunchtime and then after lunch. That's when this little line moves through that might have some pockets of heavier rain with it and some thunder and lightning. We'll keep an eye on that for any isolated severe storms and then Wednesday a break in the morning and then showers return later in the day. And then the main system is going to be late Wednesday, mainly into Thursday. You see that developing right out there that sweeps through. This is Thursday morning at 630. That's the part that might have some of those stronger storms with it. And then finally, late Thursday, the rain ends and Friday is shaping up to be a dry day, but chilly. So very warm the next few days in the 60s. Rain chances with us that next round of stronger storms late Wednesday, mainly into early Thursday. Then that moves out looking good Friday, but chilly 51. We're down below freezing Saturday morning. Temperature of 30 with a high of 52. Showers return though, 50% chance Sunday and Monday, warming back to 66 by the beginning of next week. Take a look at your wow weather for today. This is from Kathy Vaughn Williams in Sharpsburg, Georgia. And after seeing all that rain and the snow that we were dealing with over the weekend, we did get some glimpses of some sunrises and sunsets with some nice color on the horizon with the sun there looking really nice. We'd love to see your 
wow weather moments. And uh, the best way to share those with us is to become a member of our 11 Alive Community Storm Trackers group on Facebook. Just search 11 Alive Storm Trackers, and that's where we go to talk about weather, share pictures and videos. It's a fun place to talk about local weather. All right, so just days away from Valentine's Day, thousands of senior citizens in Atlanta are feeling the love. People 65 and over find themselves increasingly isolated as they grow older. So a group came up with a real unique way to help them make a connection. And Caitlin Ross tagged along with them today as they hug people at the Sterling Estates Retirement Community. <laughs> 10 seconds. <laughs> How about 15? <laughs> Mary Ellen Layden is a pro at this. Oh, I'm a great hugger. <laughs> I love to hug. She moved to the Sterling Estates Retirement Community last year when she turned 80. As I personally have gotten older, um, I live alone. I don't have that constant contact with people. According to the Pew Research Group, more than a quarter of Americans 65 and older live alone, and that population here in Georgia is expected to increase more than 65 percent by 2030. Friends my age no longer drive at night. Um, they don't like to drive on the freeways. It's just so slowly you lose those people. Visiting Angel started the hugging campaign the week of Valentine's Day to ease some of that loneliness and isolation. It's one of the most meaningful things that you can do for another living person. They're visiting retirement communities, rehabilitation centers, and hospitals across the state all week. Mary Ellen got them ready on their first day. One of my big challenges is trying to check out if a stranger is a person who likes to be hugged or not because my first impulse is to hug somebody. I'm Francesca Emmerker with the A scene. Hundreds of SCAD students and alumni had a role in last night's Oscars, and I mean a big role. Find out how. I got the details for you coming up in the A scene. Atlanta. Almost six million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Live's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man, it's the heart of the South. And it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home from different backgrounds, languages, and religions. And who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once in Olympic City, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man, Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film, Hawks Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us, use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from five to seven on the morning rush on 11 Alive. newscast not enough for you get even more at 11 alive's youtube channel where you'll find uncut interviews extended body cam footage live streams of atlanta's biggest trials and more subscribe to 11 alive today babe where are my keys uh, where's my lunch where's my phone hey where's my blue shirt where's my pen have you seen it Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go. Oh, auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Auntie. Yeah. All 
All right, folks, you know what time it is. You see your screen. It is time for a Monday's edition of the A scene, and we are kicking off with the biggest Georgia tie to the 92nd Academy Awards, best known as the Oscars. Did you know that more than 200 SCAD alumni and students contributed to many of the nominated productions this year alone? Yeah, I'm not kidding. According to SCAD's online publication, those alumni and students contributed to 21 Academy Awards nominated films, with 16 of those alumni having worked on more than one nominated film. Now specifically, SCAD students and alumni worked on Oscar nominated films ranging from 1917, A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, Avengers Endgame, Ford vs. Ferrari, Frozen 2, Harriet, Joker, Marriage Story, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, I know the list goes on, Richard Jewell, Rocket Man, Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker, The Irishman, The Lion King, even Toy Story 4. And guys, that's not even the full list. I just had to cut it off because just so many productions coming out of Georgia talent. So let's increase that list of alumni next year. If you're curious to know what SCAD degree these students and alumni majored in to work at places like Pixar, Disney, and DreamWorks, well, here are just a few of the majors. Production design, sound design, television producing, sequential art, dramatic writing, and of course, photography. Wow, let's bring home even more students and alumni next year when it comes to these major productions. And as always, for more of the A scene, if you just want to see the full list, the article that we have from SCAD, head on over over to 11alive.com slash the A scene. And as always, if you know of any entertainment tips that you want to give us, things that are happening in your neck of the woods, head on over to 11alive.com slash the A scene and let us know. All right, thanks, friend. It's time for me to head out to get ready for up late coming up in about 35 minutes. So if you're up late, join myself, Ron Jones and Chris Holcomb. We're going to be there with more news and weather. We will be checking you out. Thank you so much, Jeff. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. A mother killed in front of her children, her two-year-old daughter found putting band-aids on her wounds. Few answers, no arrests. Next, the murder mystery haunting this family for more than two decades. Televised newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. okay. right, right. I mean, that. Well, reward would be slimming, slimming down. Okay, yes. yeah, right? yeah, okay. Yeah. A little water yes. in my cup. And, and beautiful skin. Well, you know, well, even too. more beautiful skin, you know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. I'm not going to be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Some mornings what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Block, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Block on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foyne Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hotspots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip-hop legends. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever changing, always interesting. The Crock Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pretty eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel it's good vibe. When you vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate, we just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're gonna get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. 
So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. They are fun. <laughs> they're and they're convenient. Fun. Yeah. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. cold case that is haunting one community. A single mother murdered as her two children watched in horror. Two decades later, the family is still desperate for answers. 11 Alive's Ron Jones talked to the surviving children, hoping, waiting, and dreaming of closure. I remember that feeling of, is my brother and my mom okay? I just remember trying to, you know, comfort them afterwards. Um, I, I remember sitting there. I didn't think she was dead, you know, thought she was asleep. Lyric Crowder was only two years old when her mom, Lanisha Crowder, or Lane as her family and friends called her, was killed in their Carrollton home. The year was 2000, and Lane was living a quiet life here in Carrollton. She had her hands full with little Lyric and also her seven-year-old brother, Kenneth. She had just left her mom's house on a Saturday night in August, but it would be the last time anyone would ever see her alive. I knew something was wrong. I, I couldn't tell it, but I knew something was wrong. I told my sister to hide. Mm -hmm. And then they just, they just um, came in the door and start, start beating my mom, start beating me. Here's the timeline according to police. Lane returns home with Lyric and Kenneth at 9.30 Saturday night. She talks on the phone with friends until midnight. Investigators believe she was killed in the early morning hours of Sunday. Monday night, a neighbor checks on the house, sees a body on the floor and calls police. We think that it wasn't a planned out thing. Uh, more than likely, it probably was a heat of the moment kind of deal. When paramedics arrived, Kenneth had been beaten nearly to death. His mom had long passed away. As for Lyric, she was untouched. There were packages of bandages that had been opened and she was trying to help her mama. You know, she I guess she was wanting to put the bandages on her mom's boo-boos. Now in his late 20s, Kenneth still lives with brain injuries from the beating. But he says he remembers some details about that night, including more than one killer. This, this is only, um, this is only starting then I shut my eyes now I woke up in the hospital Lane's mother Doris took the kids and raised them as her own she's been there for every question every heartbreak every success and like Kenneth she thinks the people that killed Lane knew her and are still in the Carrollton area sometimes I get around certain people but I feel like they were there as for the Crowders life goes on the only thing missing is an answer to a mystery that has haunted their family and community for two decades. You think about other children who go through that, like they're gonna remember that for the rest of their lives. And, and when people sit there and say, oh, they're not gonna really remember it, they do, they really do. The family believes the killer or killers are still living in their town and witnesses may be afraid to come forward. Officials in Rockdale County are releasing more details about the ransomware attack that crippled many of their systems. In a news conference today, the director of technology services said the attack impacted operations in almost every department except for public safety. That's because after Thursday's attack, that department took many systems offline to protect information and money. County officials say it all started with a phishing email sent to an employee. Well, when you see an email that came from somebody you know, and it looks like a request for information, innocently, they could click on it. They were legitimate email addresses for the county. It was the link inside that was bad. They say going forward, they are going to ramp up efforts to educate employees on spotting these emails, and they emphasize there is no sign that any financial or personal information was compromised. We are told the biggest issue is what caused the residents and uh, their ability to pay their water bills now has been compromised. A dog stolen out of a Buckhead pharmacy has been found safe. A little dachshund, a nine-year-old miniature dachshund, Milo, was inside the running car 
outside of the CVS on Bolton Road. Police say Milo's dog sitter got out of the car to return the Red Box movie, and then somebody jumped in the Mercedes and took off. Milo has since been found and reunited with his owners. The car and the thief are still missing tonight. Losing someone close to you that uh, you deal with can be very, very tough, whether it's a family member, even a celebrity, as we have discovered. Grief comes in many different forms. 11 Alive's Chesley McNeil talked about it with a local pastor. It's part of this week's How Faith Fits In. Loss of life certainly grabs our attention, especially when it's someone we had a close relationship with. The loss of celebrities tends to bring out the same grief, people we barely know. Because they're in the public eye, we have a sense of intimacy. We, we see them week in, week out, and we have this sense of connection. However real that is, we just feel it. Pastor Gerard Longbonds of Peace Tree Christian Church explains how the connection is built over time. I remember the day that Kobe Bryant got selected to play for Charlotte and then the day he was shipped over to the Lakers. I remember the day he came on uh, Letterman for the first time as a 17 year old. I remember the day in the All-Star game he tried to challenge Michael Jordan. And so his own experience in life mediated through the screen is actually shaped part of my life, my story. So that brings me back to my own personal experience. And now if he's gone, it, takes a little something away from my own story, my own history. Remaining in grief is when it can cause more harm than good, according to Pastor Longbonds. He also recommends not shrugging it off. I would encourage people to not ignore their sense of mourning, even if you didn't know Kobe. Um, you hurt and that's real. And, and so it's something that maybe you need to explore. And in fact, because we're social creatures, it's probably a good idea to talk about it with people. Pastor Longbond shares that as much as we feel the effects of death, our children do as well. So what do we say to them? I think that it's an opportunity to show them that we are mortal and that we too will die. And that makes us have to think about our life in intentional terms. A public memorial for Kobe Bryant and his daughter Gianna will take place February 24th in Los Angeles inside the Staples Center. Jennifer Aniston, Hugh Jackman, Chris Pratt, what do these celebrities have in common? Reportedly, they have all dieted using a method called intermittent fasting. It's popular diet. Does it work? Here is David Schechter with our Verify team and the research. So what I wanted to tell you is that uh, I'm on about hour 16 of not eating. How's that going? I'm pretty hungry right now. <laughs> Can you hear it? Verify. Fast facts. Have you heard about intermittent fasting? It's where you restrict your eating so you just eat for an eight hour period and then you fast for a 16 hour period. Or there's alternate day fasting where you just have 500 calories today, but tomorrow you can eat whatever you want. So here's what everybody wants to know. Is there a link between intermittent fasting and weight loss? For answers, I'm looking at published research. Hey. Hi. There you are. I'm talking to Dr. Krista Verity. She researches intermittent fasting at the University of Illinois, Chicago. Is there a link between intermittent fasting and weight loss? Yes. Yes, there's a link between uh, intermittent fasting and weight loss. So I guess it works. We're done. But wait, how well does it work? Verity co-authored this paper in the Journal of American Medicine, Internal Medicine. It looked at weight loss associated with alternate day fasting. Over a year, participants experienced 6% weight loss. A smaller study Verity also co-authored looked at eight hour time restricted eating. They found participants lost 3% body weight over three months. And this paper in the Annual Review of Nutrition analyzed 16 research papers on intermittent fasting and found almost any intermittent fasting regime can result in some weight loss. Now there's a lot of information out there that says people are losing weight because intermittent fasting is actually changing our metabolism, burning more energy. Is that true? Does intermittent fasting help you actually burn more calories? Intermittent fasting does not help you burn more calories. Intermittent fasting helps people lose weight just because they end up eating less. Um, it's not like revving up their metabolism or anything like that. Um, it's just literally because you're kind of fooling the body into eating less in some way. So is there a link between intermittent fasting and weight loss? The answer is yes. But the secret is not some magic sauce. It happens because you're eating less food. If you've got something you want verified, send me an email. Now let's go get that hamburger. Having a child is a memorable experience, but as many of us know, it comes with risk. A new study shows the chances a pregnant woman may suffer a heart attack are higher than ever before. After the break, 
Our medical correspondent, Dr. Sujatha Reddy, joins us with tips to ensure for a healthy pregnancy. And we had a little break in the rain just a few minutes ago, but it didn't last very long. More rain is feeding in here to West Georgia, closing in on the city. It stretches back into Alabama and even Mississippi, so it will be soggy tonight with even the potential for some flooding. We'll talk more about that coming up. Coming up, the freeze is warming up for another season with the Braves. Man, to be able to run like that. He's got gold medal aspirations for this season. We go one on one with the freeze. He is way too cool. <laughs> Maybe way too cold, too. Coming up next in sports. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. So what's the best part about Uplink? Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together, our voices grow. Together, we come alive. Amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together, we are unstoppable. Together, we are where Atlanta speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows? Hey, and they cliffhangers. Would, you know, they yeah. didn't wait the next week. You're, oh, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Atlanta, almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Live's Chesley McNeil. I'm gonna give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man, it's the heart of the South. And it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home from different backgrounds, languages, and religions. And who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once an Olympic city, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man, Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film, Hawks' Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us, use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from five to seven on the Morning Rush on 11 Alive. Newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Babe, where are my keys? Uh, where's my lunch? Where's my phone? Hey, where's my blue shirt? Where's my pen? Have you seen it? Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foyne Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go. Oh, my auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. February is American Heart Month. It's a month to raise awareness about heart health, and a new study got our attention. It says the number of pregnant women suffering from heart attacks is going up. Joining us, 11 Alive medical correspondent, Dr. Sujatha Reddy. Dr. Reddy, so uh, heart disease is still the number one killer of women in our country, and now we see the tie to mother mortality. 
Exactly right. Maternal mortality is something that's been out in the news a lot lately, and this is also interesting. We know for African American women, they're three times more likely to have cardiovascular complications and die when they're pregnant than non-black women. So it's something to really pay attention to. And, and just to reiterate, this is younger women. What are the risk factors here? Yeah, and this is key because we've told women for a long time, when you're trying to get pregnant or thinking about trying to get pregnant, go ahead and be in the best health you can be. We know the risk factors are going to be African American race. If you have high blood pressure before you get pregnant and then while you're pregnant, that's obviously a risk. And obesity and being older, because these are all risk factors mm -hmm. for heart disease in general, but then add that to the risk of during pregnancy, which also exists because when you're pregnant, yeah. your heart is working overtime, so you're stressing your heart. If you already have high blood pressure or overweight, it's that much more of a risk. Okay, really interesting. Something else I wanted to talk to you about. We've talked in the past that the American Academy of Pediatrics discourages a, a parent sleeping with an infant. According to the American Academy of Pediatrics, though, one in five mothers are still deciding to do this. It is a mistake that could be, be deadly. And I'm curious for your thoughts on this because I think about the women who just want to co-sleep and have an infant in bed, but then also women who are nursing and they're so exhausted that they're just falling asleep by accident. Yeah, and the last thing we want to do is discourage women from breastfeeding. We know breastfeeding itself can decrease the risk of sudden infant death syndrome. But what we're finding is despite the message being out there, parents are still sharing a bed and that is where it can be dangerous. If you doze off and fall asleep with your baby, it happens, we've all been there and done that. Yeah. We're talking about women that are, even though they have better advice and they understand they're still doing this, but we also know there are ways to decrease the risk of sudden infant death syndrome and we have a graphic of that. Yeah. You know, you wanna make sure you put your baby to sleep on its back. You also wanna use a firm sleep surface, not something soft and cushiony. Breastfeeding, as I mentioned, can decrease the roof, the risk, and you also want to share a room with your infant from some, at least till six to twelve months, but not a bed. And despite how cute they are, don't put stuffed animals right. and crib bumpers in with that bed because what you're trying to do is decrease the risk of suffocation for that baby. And something as simple as a baby rolling on its side and its nose getting covered up by a blanket or by your arm can lead to this. You can't control yeah. everything, but there are things we can't control. We can control, and that's what we need to focus yeah, on. Yeah, keep that crib simple and put a little bassinet beside your bed. Beside your They're bed, close, you got but it. not right on top. You of got you. it for six to twelve months. Yeah. You got it. All right, Dr. Reddy, thank you so thank much. You. We continue to watch this rain moving in and after a brief lull in the activity, we're now getting more rain feeding in coming in from the south and west, generally light rain, but we do have a couple of pockets of moderate rain out there as well. I'll take you up a 75 there at 575. We'll put this into live mode there. You can see some yellow indicating some moderate rain uh, near the Canton area, mainly light rain here, but then over to the west coming out I 20 from Alabama near Anniston, Talladega and up toward Gadsden. That's going to keep pushing in as well. So even though Rome's not particularly heavy right now or Cedar Town or Buchanan, uh, that more moderate rain is going to be feeding in and it stretches all the way back into Mississippi and even back into Louisiana and that moisture feed just continues to move in here. So at times it kind of tapers off a little bit. Then you'll see more coming in. Then there'll be a couple of holes in the rain and then more will come in yet again. So as you see, we have the um, school closings at the bottom of your screen. There are some school closings and delays for some counties up in North Georgia and in West Georgia due to that threat for flooding during the overnight hours. Let me show you what we're watching out there and we do have that risk for some flooding uh, in some spots with that flood watch that is in effect for all of North Georgia, Metro Atlanta and some counties on the south side to the east. It goes over toward Athens as well and individual flood warnings on specific creeks and streams too. Uh, from this afternoon through tomorrow, we can see around two to four inches of rain. We've seen about an inch of rain here in Atlanta so far locally higher amounts in some areas. So here's the timeline. This is our high resolution rapid refresh. This is that next wave that's feeding in right now again overnight with some of those moderate showers, then some breaks here and there three o'clock. You're still going to be hearing rain on your roof. So just be aware if you have an issue with water getting into your house whenever it's heavy like this, keep an eye on that tonight in the morning driving to work. The roads are going to be wet, but there might be some breaks here and there and then in the afternoon tomorrow. 
We're going to watch this little line develop, and within this, it is possible to have some individual uh, stronger cells with that that might cause a thunderstorm uh, with some damaging winds possible, but I don't think that's going to be really widespread. This is another look at the RPM model, very similar to what we just showed you. I just want you to notice, though, tomorrow it's not going to be torrential rain all day. It's going to be scattered showers off and on. There's that line sweeping through for the afternoon. That will give us that risk for some uh, isolated stronger storms. And then on Wednesday, a break in the morning with mostly cloudy skies, but no active rain. So I think we'll have a, a brief period to dry out a little bit Wednesday before additional showers come in in the afternoon. And then that main line of storms that'll be coming our way really early in the morning hours on Thursday as this sweeps through, that's going to have the potential for stronger storms. That'll finally get out of here and then we'll begin the drying out process really late Thursday night into Friday. It's going to be chilly Friday morning down to 34 with a high of only 51. Saturday, we're below freezing at 30 with a high of 52. And then the rain chances come back Sunday and Monday at 50% uh, with high temperatures back up into the mid 60s by Monday. The tribute to Vince Carter, the Daytona Beach native is playing his final game in Florida tonight as a professional. Vince Carter saying farewell in his hometown state. The farewell tour continues for him as he closes out his 22nd season in the NBA. That is just unbelievable. Trey Young is unbelievable, too, in a different way. And one of the few snubs on the Team USA initial list of players who could be on Team USA for the Olympics. Young and John Collins were left off. So is Zion Williamson, the New Orleans rookie. But LeBron James and Steph Curry are on the list, so all is not lost. Hawks back in action tonight. Central Florida, Orlando, things were good for a while. Kevin Herter, the long distance shot. Hawks had 61 points in the first half, led by six. Vince Carter from Daytona Beach, giving the fans something to remember with his three, almost as far away as Daytona Beach from Orlando. But the Magic came roaring back, six threes in the fourth quarter. They were hitting everything. High scoring game, the Hawks lose 135 to 126. Baseball season right around the corner, but the freeze already is in mid-season form. But it's not just for those races on the warning track. The freeze, whose real name, name is Nigel Talton, is training for a chance to compete in the Olympics in Tokyo this summer. As Alex Glaze tells us, the Braves helped him realize that he could make that dream a reality. You know the freeze, but the man wearing the freeze costume has dreams that extend far beyond racing on the warning track of Truist Park. I'm just enjoying his journey. The journey Nigel Talton is on will take him to Albuquerque, New Mexico for U.S. Indoor Nationals and will hopefully lead to Tokyo this summer for the Olympics. I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but the group I train with, the coach I got, the support I got, um, it's just about getting rest, training. So. I'm just excited to get outdoor started. Getting to the Olympics has been a longtime goal for the 29-year-old sprinter. But in 2016, his dream got sidelined when he tore his hamstring two weeks before Olympic trials. I thought it was like it was over. I wanted to quit track. But then the Braves created the freeze and coincidentally breathed new life into Nigel's love for sprinting. Push, push, push. He's working with Olympic gold medalist Dwight Phillips and has seen major improvements in a short period of time. My time dropped last week, so I qualified for nationals again. So last time I went to indoor nationals was 2013 when I was at Kennesaw State. His goals are clear, but he also realizes he won't be defined by the results at track meets. His journey doesn't end there. If it's meant to be, if God want me to make that team, I'll make that team. If not, if you want me to continue to inspire other kids or other people not to give up on their dreams, I'm, I'm down with it. Wow, how, how about how fast he is? That's amazing. All right, finally, reports out of Major League Baseball, and I was thinking about expanding the playoffs, adding two more wildcard teams in each division, and the top wildcard team then gets to pick its opponent. Of course, it's all done in a selection show type setting. Can I just do two thumbs down immediately on this idea? Come on, baseball. Come on. All right, that's it for sports and tonight's de facto commentary, and <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> the 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. 
you hear what happened today, I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boil Water Advisory. Hyperlocal, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So you just do what I say in the flow. No, 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 You could have super. Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta. From movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A-Scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, Ooh. did I not text you? All right. Ah, it's in my drafts. That's my bad. So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm. Stop. Yeah, I consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah, I've like got him. the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Jess? I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish last. Oh, Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Right, right. About that. Well, reward would be... Slimming. Slimming down. Okay. Yes. Right, yeah, okay. Yeah, a little water yes. in my cup. And and beautiful skin. <laughs> well, you know, well, even too. more beautiful skin. You know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. I'm not gonna be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning Rush weekdays, five to seven a.m. Only on Eleven Alive. Some mornings, what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Blog, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Blog on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. We are watching more waves of rain that are moving through the area right now, and it is possible tomorrow that you could hear a little thunder or lightning with some of those in the afternoon. We've got the flood watch in effect overnight, and then another round of rain coming in late Wednesday, mainly early Thursday with a severe weather threat possible early on Thursday. Once that gets out of here, the flood threat goes away. We begin to dry out and we get chilly again. We're down below freezing here by Saturday morning with a high of 52 and then a 50% chance for showers coming back here Sunday and Monday, but we do warm back up to the mid 60s by the beginning of next I'm week. I'm seeing a world where you're in here for five hours Saturday morning with maybe <laughs> snow. That was last <laughs> no, Saturday, no, no, not I'm this sorry. Saturday. No okay. way. I'm just messing with you. That's all. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We appreciate it. Have a great night. See you tomorrow right here. Artwork from some pretty eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel is good vibe. When you vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate. We just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're gonna get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must-see. There are hundreds of works of art along the belt line. I'm talking murals sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. 
televised newscasts not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. They <laughs> are fun. And they're, they're convenient. Fun. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. I just That's feel the like thing. they have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a new yeah. way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together, our voices grow. Together, we come alive. Amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together, we are unstoppable. Together, we are where Atlanta speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows? Hey, and they cliffhangers. Would, you know, they didn't ah. wait the next week. You're all, oh, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Atlanta, almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Live's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. 